But over, if, a, if, over a long enough if time, if you're line. gonna be an automotive investor, you have to be committed to the long term. Because mm-hmm. if you miss on the short term arbitrage, you just you hold it long enough. Yeah. If it's a if it's a good car, if it's a yeah. bad car, then it's just a bad car. But if you yeah. hold it long enough, it'll it'll come back. Yeah. Um, What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoke and Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Off the Record. You guys know about Off the Record. They're the shit. They're rad. I love them. I got uh, pulled over for some things definitely didn't do really far from home in Northern Car- uh, California, like like 800 miles almost from my house. And uh, ordinarily, if I get pulled over, I would go to court and fight the ticket. But this is so far away, there is no way I want to go back there and fight the ticket. Sent it off to off the record, answered a few questions about my experience on the side of the road, couple checks on the boxes, sent a photo of the ticket, and boom, off the record, is going to go fight that ticket on my behalf. I don't have to do anything else, and I fully expect them to send me an email in a month or two saying, your ticket has been dismissed. It is amazing. They are the best. They take care of you. Cops lie all the time. It's proven over and over that cops lie all the time. And so you need protection. You need someone in your corner that knows the system, no matter where in the country you live and no matter where in the country you get pulled over. That's why Off The Record is the jam. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST or download that Off The Record app. Use code TST10. Make an account now. Get yourself in that game. And then if you get pulled over and ticketed, you can be calm. You don't have to argue on the side of the road because you know you've got a team of folks in your corner that are going to handle that on your behalf. Offtherecord.com slash TST or code TST10 on the Off The Record app. All right, folks, on today's episode in studio, we got Doug Tabbitt and Arnie Toman. Arnie is back for a second time this quarter. Don't tell any of our other guests. Uh, Doug is one of my favorite uh, collectible and sports car dealers. He owns a place called Switch Cars out of Ohio. Met him a very long time ago, and he's always been a phenomenal resource. Uh, we talk about the collector car market, uh, what affects it, as well as the potential looming crash in cars uh, as a result of interest rates and bad loans and bad financing and all kinds of stuff. We talk about cannonballing because that's uh, sort of these guys' hobby uh, and vintage cannonballing as is the new trend. I like that a lot actually. Vintage cannonballing sounds more fun than traditional cannonballing to me uh, as well as uh, Arnie's business Cannonball Garage and uh, two great guests. Love having these guys in studio and a really interesting show with Doug Tabbitt and Arnie Toman on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Welcome yes. in live people. Welcome in people who will listen to this later. Doug and Arnie in the building. Arnie, you are the first person to come back more than once a quarter in many, many years. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sneaking his ass back yeah. onto the show. Well, we were here like two weeks ago. <laughs> no, when you were here with Freddie, was yeah, it here with Freddie before in, uh, Pebble Beach July. in July? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was recently. But f- when Johnny Lieberman finds out that somebody else came, we try to not like do more than, you know, for obvious reasons, right? Have new people and whatever. And it's cool. But when Johnny Lieberman finds out that you were here more than once a quarter, <laughs> he's, very he's gonna be. Well, I usually just stay on the other side of the fence. You yeah, just, yeah. just kind of wait for it to open. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like running in. Doug, welcome to Los Angeles, my friend. Thank you, man. My Ohioan friend. Yeah. Switch cars. Switching your car. You still got the same shirt. 12 years on. Keep your woman. Switch your cars. No, this Switch. is my new shirt. Oh, that's the I new one? I had a different one? shirt. But you the, always the, had the, the similar slogan. Uh, this You've is had a that slogan, slogan for a long time. No, this no? is new. What was the old slogan? Uh, it was like something about uh, the the cure for automotive ADD. Oh, uh, that I remember yeah. that one too. Yeah, I thought because we were th- at Spring Mountain Racetrack, so it was like come test drive on the track by. I enjoy, remember that whatever. one. Yeah. yeah, and then switch it out. But I thought yeah. I thought there was a keep your wife switch your car thing going. Well, maybe, been a, it's been out for a little while. It's been a yeah. Little, maybe I mean, it's just a few yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, maybe years yeah. Ahead. Instagram just makes yes. every moment feel like forever. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the internet. I'm so I'm so tired of the internet. Um, what you doing out here? I uh, can't say. 
<laughs> well, he's here. here. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> guessing you got here by plane, and you maybe didn't. No, we both no. got here by plane. Yes, okay. We, um, well, we can say, because this won't air until later, there is a uh, Cannonball tribute event, so uh, vintage cars oh, yeah. traveling yeah. across the country at a um, <clears throat> enthusiastic pace? enthusiastic rate of speed. Define yeah. vintage. Yes. Like what? Uh, 84 okay. or older. So, it, yeah, but oh, when, okay. when actual real cannonball, proper cannonballs were happening. Group yes. cannonballs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So yep. the, the period of cannonball U.S. Is, so anything before 83? 84. Because it's supposed to be a continuation of the U.S. Express, right, right, which right. ended in 83. So right. But it's not like it has to be 78 to 83. No. Because I guess they could have been driving older shit. In the original ones, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Got it. As got they it. did. Yeah. Did anyone bring any actual p cannonball cars? Somebody's driving a 450 SEL 69, which right, but not one that actually. It, oh, one that did participate. That one itself didn't. Oh, okay. But yeah. it's a That's car what I was that asking did. if it was actual ones that participated in previous cannonballs. Mm -hmm. No uh, provenance. No. 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 450 SEL 6.9 is a nice car, though. Mm -hmm. We have one here, and it is every time it starts up, it's got a fucking rumble to it that's like pretty un Mercedes like for that period. Yeah. They're rad. Yeah. But those seats, I don't know if I could do for 35, 40 hours. That'd be rough. Yeah. Old spring loaded seats are not yeah. great for long trips. And then well, if the suspension all hold together. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole other story. We yeah. rebuild the accumulators halfway across. Yeah, the is it air is it old air suspension? No, it's Hy hydraulic. It's hydraulic. Oh right. They were mm -hmm. very problematic. Yeah. They still yeah. are. Well it only has to last like forty hours. That's true. You can make it work for forty <laughs> if you, you get Yeah, look at that. Oh. oh that one in the photo's got the Euro bumpers too. Man, did the US bumpers really fucking wreck the look of those things. But they drove. They drove good. Yeah, no, they're really nice. So, what is a good? What makes a good vintage cannonball car? That would be one of them. Yeah, uh, that would, that's one hundred percent. A nine twenty eight is on my short list. Mm -hmm. which, yeah, I don't know if that's if that's a good car for it. <laughs> but they ran a lot of them. Yeah. back in the day, they well, did well. If you well, were doing it today, it, you'd think like a yeah Panamera would be a good choice. Yeah, you know, yeah. for the same reasons. Well, but a lot of sports cars of that era were really good up to a hundred miles an hour, so mm -hmm. they weren't great at cruising at highway speeds. And the yeah. nine twenty eight is brilliant at triple digits. Yeah, it it does exactly what it was designed to do. When I got my three twenty eight back from the full refreshing from Donnie, when I had all new bushings and all new shocks and all all new rubber, all new brakes, all new everything. For the first time, I believed David Deem and Doug Turner. I did, I did not believe them. <laughs> yeah, right, 150 <laughs> miles an hour in that fucking thing. And then I got back in my car, and I stuck it at 125 and drove to Phoenix. Totally chill. And I was like, you know what? I actually think this is possible. Sure. I actually think you a 328 or a 308 might actually be a good choice for 110 to 150. It was really good at it. Geared right. That settled in at about 110. Really nice. Good cars for that. Not much room, though. <laughs> yeah. No. That would be uncomfortable. How's the seating position? I've never even sat in one. It looks really awkward, and it is kind of awkward, but when you're sitting in it, it's and it's awkward if you're if you're on a really twisty road because you're sort of leaned back. And and the, the the steering wheel is sort of tilted away from you like a that's, panel, that's that's like a panel truck. Yeah. yeah. So you really have to shuffle steer. If you're going hand over hand a lot in a tight road, it's like not great. But on a highway, when you can kind of un you can either underhand it or just sort of rest your hands on the bottom, um, or if even if you're just doing a nine and three. It's, it's not bad, and it looks more awkward than it is. I drove, you know, to Phoenix and back is like six and a half hours each way, even if you're driving pretty fast. And I was surprised at how comfortable it was, because if you looked at me, I didn't look like I was comfortable, but it did actually work <laughs> out all right. right. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. If you're under a certain, if you're under like six feet, it's better. Because like, I did it with the top off, and that, I can sit upright with the top off, but with the top on, I have to scrunch a little bit, and that's mm. like suboptimal. I don't have those problems. You do not have those problems. You nice, probably, it's you nice, a 308, nice right? 328? Medium. Yeah. You, you fit yeah. probably great in those cars, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you're under like 510, they're like awesome. 
Um, but anyway, 928 is probably a good one for for a vintage cannonball. Yeah. I could tell you the worst one. Yeah. Lamborghini Countach. Really? Because <laughs> of, of reliability or because uh, of comfort? Uh, everything. All the above. But it needs to happen. Okay, so I, I, would, I, disagree I would disagree with you a little bit on yeah. that. I, it's bad because it's a visible car, right? Yeah. Everybody's going to know you're, you're driving fast in a Lamborghini. But I've put four or five highway hours in a Countach, and it's really, really good on I, the highway. I it's would agree with Doug. It's terrible around right? town, but when you get on the highway, you're like, oh, wait, this is this is what this car is supposed to do. I, I agree with Doug. I actually, I, you know, my Countach, I've driven to Santa Barbara and back. I've driven to Palm Springs and back. And I actually find it to be delightful as a highway car. Well, I haven't been on one in, or in one on the highway. They're so, really nice. I and I actually think you'd be more likely to get away speeding with, not get away, but I think people would... Would be give you a ki- pass. would be kinder to you driving fast in a Countach than they would in an Aventador, especially yes. if you wore a right. wig and skin tight, <laughs> yeah. you know, bright yeah. outfits. Yeah, and they you, thought you were. Yeah, you brought a little whimsy to the party. Right. Yeah, you know, no, that's for um, sure. But it's better on the highway than you think, and and uh, it really does settle into a, a hundred mile an hour cruise quite nicely. It's got but a there's huge gas to put tank. Extra fuel. There's that. The fuel economy is bad. It has a 30-gallon tank, but it takes a really long time to fill it because it's those stupid saddle oh, tanks. Yeah. I just saw Demuro this morning. His Countach is an 83. He's got dual fillers. They got rid of those in 86. So he's got a filler on each side. So you could pull down that aisle and double right. fill. But mine, you only have one filler. So you fill up the one tank, and then you got to wait five minutes for it for to shuffle to the oh, other gosh. tank. <laughs> it's very dumb. Hard pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the anti-cannonball. <laughs> and you have, like, you have, like, no idea how much gas you ever have. I'm pretty sure I've never actually filled it up all the way. I have no idea. There's no way to tell. <laughs> There's literally no way to tell if it's full. It's like you just stop at every other gas station. I feel it. I, I top it off every time I drive it. That's pretty much all I do. But it's a better highway car than it is an around town car for sure. It's quite nice on the highway, and it's geared right. You never have to downshift out of fifth. You just smash the throttle and go. Yeah, but all right. but yeah, fuel fuel economy not so good. I just saw the black car from the movie at Pebble. It was pretty fun. The fu- the movie things they did to that car are pretty hilarious. They made it look a little silly. Yeah, the fling. Is like <laughs> it's a little, it creates lift. Yeah, the fling it probably has like such lift, and like I had to I laid down under it to see what oh, all those 12, twelve the exhaust, exhaust pipes, pipes all yeah. did. And I was like, this is so dumb. <laughs> but the antennas looked cool. Yeah, that's you gotta gotta have antennas. Antennas do make you look cool. I, I put after I saw Alex Roy's M5, I might have put some antennas on my car. <laughs> and back in '06, because I thought it was like. They could. They were connected to shit, but I definitely didn't need any of it. <laughs> I had antennas on my Crown Vic police interceptor in high school. But yeah, they weren't connected were to they, anything. Were, they weren't really. They, <laughs> they were oh, they dummy. were fake. Oh, he fake was that, he was that guy. Yeah. guy. <laughs> I saw it today coming back from San Diego. A, a lifted Crown Vic on fucking giant Raptor-sized BFGs yeah. with a Hoonigan license plate. Oh, and I was yeah. like, "Yep, that's the guy yep, right there. That's, that's a good time. That dude is. That dude is chilling." Fucking JRG, Jewish Racing Gold. It was superb. It was superb. Um, so, you, all right. So, we, so you can't talk about all the things we just talked about. Cool. Got it. Because it's all a secret. Well, it won't be. It won't be. Yeah. Um, but uh, how many uh, how many cars roundabout? Twenty-ish. Oh, that's a bunch. Yeah. That's a bunch. Yeah. Traditional starting and end points. We still yes. using those. Red Ball Portofino. How does uh, how do the folks at the Red Ball like you guys? Are they cool over there well, or there's what? There's one guy, yeah, the one your guy, friend, Paul. Paul. Yeah, yeah. But he, but he retired, so. And everybody else is just cranky all the time. I mean, you read the Google reviews of the Red Ball Garage. <laughs> I never have, is, but. I mean, they're just, they're New Yorkers. Yeah. In and out, yeah. come on, don't park there. They yell at you yeah, if you do anything care less wrong. About and, and the history of it or anything. Yeah. Um, but Paul was cool. Paul was cool. He was always very cool. Yeah. Before I knew anything about Cannonball, that was my office garage. I would commute in from the suburbs to go to work and park at the Red Ball garage just for fucking work. Wow. And when I found out later what it was, I was like, what the fuck? Like, no one ever said that. The reason it is Cannonball related is because it was the 
just the the press parking uh, deck for uh, car and for driver. car and driver. That's yeah, they just there. kept all their press cars there. Yeah, which is hilarious that they were based in Manhattan. I mean, to base of a car places. magazine yeah, in Manhattan right? yeah. is like it's almost what's sillier, Manhattan or fucking Ann Arbor? Like <laughs> it's a terrible <laughs> place to base a car <laughs> magazine out of. I mean, at least Ann Arbor's close to the manufacturers, right? I mean, that does make some kind of sense, but also like it's just like super snowy and there's nothing else around. Like, how about? Los Angeles. Motor Trend, for all the things they do wrong, have placed, right here, have yeah. placed their facilities correctly. So they're very good at testing cars in rush hour traffic. Do we have, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but we, we've got... How many canyons are there next to Detroit? Yeah, lots of big yeah. mountains in Ann Arbor. That's why they right? had to build lots all the racetracks. Lots of corners yeah. there, yeah. Um, so I actually wanted to talk about uh, the, the recent swings in the uh, collector car market. Because they Sounds are good. substantial. Only if we can also talk about the subprime market. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Where do you want to start? Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're, they're both correlated. Yeah. Um, so I'll start with my, my big opinion, right? Hot take. Hot take. Um, this is what we were talking about because all of the market swings affect how we run our business, right? I'm in the... I'm in the car business. We do high-end cars. We do fun cars that aren't high-end. We do asset class cars that people are buying to try to make money on long term. So we have to kind of be a good study on this and, and what stuff is doing. And it's really odd right now because, in general, the market's softening. But you have certain pockets of the market that are defying what everything else is doing. Mm -hmm. right? Is it the stuff, the pockets that are people who are rich enough it's to not no, be it's, affected it's by the market? Random. Okay. So yeah, it, it has nothing to do with that. Carrera GTs are off 20% from their high. Mm -hmm. um, I, part of that might be to the, due to the fact that nobody can drive them for a year, but yeah. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah. There's that. Um, but then like Porsche 997s are the hot ticket right now. Anything, even base ones. Mm -hmm. uh, GT3s are up again. Uh, Vipers are down, but Lotus Exiges are up. So an S260 with 10,000 miles just sold for 132 grand this week on oh, Bria wow. Trailer, which is essentially a record. Is it so black? It was gray. Oh, okay. So you've got all these trends where I think people are jumping in and jumping out, trying to say, well, what's, what's the, next the next hot thing, thing yeah. right? And I blame Magnus Walker for even making that a concept, right? Everybody's looking uh, at these the things as short-term thing. investments, <laughs> right? I produced the first season of that show. <laughs> yeah. That's very funny. I've... <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to put you in the same category as, as, as the guy that uh, wrote the um, – the McDonald's jingle. I don't even remember the jingle now, but one of the jingles, and he was bragging about it, and I was like, "Yeah, I hate that. I hate that jingle. I, you went down a notch in my book now." So, but no, um, only because of the premise of it, because it ruins how people think about cars. Right? We're we're car people. We grew up with cars on the wall, you know, posters and stuff, calendars, whatever, and we weren't thinking about whether or not they go up in value. We weren't thinking mm -hmm. about the minutia. But isn't that your of, whole business? Buying a car and selling it for more money? Yes, but I'm buying it for wholesale and selling <laughs> it for retail. I'm buying a toy, yeah. right? I'm buying a toy and providing people fun experience, right? The, the premise of my business is not selling investments. I'm not selling them to people going, this is gonna be a great thing in your portfolio. Okay. I'm going, this car is awesome to drive. It's gonna bring you joy. And it's something you've probably always wanted. And you have since probably after the the big, uh, the great recession of 2009, you know, cars started to come back. And then they really came back and people were buying into them in mass, hoarding them and looking at them as investments. Well, and that mindset for so long, is stuck. Yeah, well, for so long, people would, you know, they'd be like, well, don't buy a car because that's a toy. Buy a stock because it'll make you money over time. Buy yes. a this because it'll make you, you know, it showed a sort of a conservative investing strategy, right? But yeah. as that system fell apart and turned out to be totally propped up on bullshit, people were like, well, 
maybe I I can buy a car and then at least I can enjoy it while I'm hopefully making money or not losing money, right? When right. did this like really, I mean, is it always generational? Like, you know, they had the pre-war cars that would always be featured at Pebble Beach when we were, when we were 16. Like what were the most valuable cars at Pebble Beach when we were 16 years old? Those cars have always been kind of the same. Brass era stuff and yeah. Dusenberg. What about like the 300 SLs and all the, you know, the like 250 GTO. Those, I mean, we've read those classified ads from car and drivers and stuff from like the, well, the 60s, from they, the they 70s and those were like five grand. But like, right. I think it was like 90s? race cars. Yeah, yeah. It was probably 90s, right? When they started going. I think that, I, I well, feel Well, there was like, a big jump in the late 80s. Right. Right. So if you look at, at it's also values a big back then. The Ferraris, Income. the classic and a lot Ferraris. Of them, yeah. That was not necessarily necessarily driven by people buying them up as investments. It was driven by uh, people in Japan buying them up like crazy. And then that market dried up overnight. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so you saw right. a big crash in the early 90s in that market. And then they came back, but they weren't viewed as investments per se. I mean, some stuff, right? Like the F50, they yeah. did a three-year lease because they didn't want people flipping it. Uh, I think the early 2000s, that really started to become a thing both with the dot com money and with Barrett Jackson being right. televised, and you're that was seeing huge. you yeah. know the Hemi Cudas go for a million bucks. All yeah. of a sudden, you're you're you have this mindset of, oh, that car used to be five grand, now yeah. it's a million. Yeah, yeah. And and people are going, ooh, how can we extrapolate this out? Yeah. I think there's also though a correlation like Boomer money that funded the Barrett Jackson thing, right? And you had the Boyd Connington show, so you had shows that were saying. Like even American Chopper was like, what is this chopper worth? Oh, three hundred thousand dollars, you know, built for this company as a write off to help market yeah. them on the show. But you it seemed like we were being presented on television with vehicles being worth six to seven figures. And then you had boomer money that funded the whole CUDA thing. Yeah. And and if and if the increase in the eighties was due to like the Japanese stock market bubble, so like basically an abundance of cash for whatever generation. Yes. And so and it's continued, sure. like you said. I think the the TV shows set the trend, and it's just been like a baton passed to each decade, or each yes. generation as it's gone. And I think some of it is legitimate, right? So Jay Leno said something to the effect of, you know, people buy what they love. They chase what they love. So nostalgia drives market values. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of that's legitimate, right? I bought a Diablo 6.0 because that was... The, the only poster car yeah. from the 90s left that Dude, I can look at still every afford. every car I own. Right. It's like literally that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Folks, we got to take a quick break from the show for Groove Life wallets, belts. I have been uh, losing a little weight, but there's a lot of uh, nuance in between your traditional belt holes, right? Weight goes up a little bit, weight goes down a little bit, and uh, and I like uh, the adjustments, the adjustability, right, of the Groove Life belt. It's the world's baddest buckle, right? It snaps using rare earth neodymium, and this is like the belt of the future, man. I've had uh, the same style of brown leather belts from 20 years ago, and Groove Life is here with this all new belt style. It's got just the right amount of stretch, but just the right amount of structure, right? And the buckle includes what they like to call stiff tech. That's a, a fancy way of saying that there's no annoying belt flaps that need to be tucked in. And whatever happens to your Groove Life gear, they're here to help. They've got a 94 year no BS warranty. So the Groove Life belt is the, uh, the last belt you will ever need unless you live to be like 140. Just saying, the, it's not, you can't make an absolute out of this stuff, but 94 year no BS warranty is pretty, pretty good. I love this belt. Uh, I love the, uh, that buckle is really cool. It adjusts with me, which is really nice. And uh, I'm, I'm all about it. So if you need the perfect gift for yourself or a special person in your life, head over to GrooveLife.com slash Tire20 for 20% off all Groove Life products. And they make more than just belts. They've got wallets, rings, watch bands, AirPod cases, everyday carry stuff, and much, much more. The best offer you will find, you have to use my link. It's GrooveLife.com slash Tire20 for 20% off your entire order. One last time, GrooveLife.com slash Tire20 for 20% off your entire order. 
We're also brought to you today by Electric E-Bikes. Love that electric e-bike. They sent us one. And let me tell you something. If you live in a, a city or a dense suburb, e-bikes can come change the game. It allows you to use a bike for something that you wouldn't ordinarily use a bike for. It can accelerate all of the great things about getting outside. And electric e-bikes are a fun, easy, and affordable way to get moving. It's got pedal assist and it's got a throttle. Plus, the electric e-bikes have convenient, foldable designs so you can take your fall adventures to a whole new level. You can go to electricebikes.com to learn more about their wide selection of e-bikes uh, that start at just $7.99 with the XP Lite. These are some of the most affordable e-bikes on the market. And I love an e-bike because I live about a mile and a half from work. It's like a little too far to walk. Like, I have walked it. I could walk it. But, like, it's about a 35-minute walk uh, with a couple big hills. And I don't really have the time for that. But on an e-bike, I can actually get to the office uh, in less time than it would take me to drive a car. Right? I take up less space on the road. I'm not using any emissions or any wear and tear on our infrastructure. Uh, and I'm also I'm not getting sweaty on the way to work. I love exercising. I exercise literally every single day. But I don't want to exercise on my way to the office. Those are separate things for me. And that's why the electric e-bike helps helps me commute in a more efficient and effective way uh, that fits into my lifestyle. And maybe your lifestyle, maybe you see a little bit of this in your own lifestyle. I'm not saying you need to go 40 miles a day on an e-bike, but if your commute is like five miles or less, you could probably do it many days of the year on an e-bike. You won't have to get sweaty. You can carry some traditional stuff. You can save costs on traditional transportation like gas, parking, insurance, and maintenance. You can even get financing on the electric e-bikes. So shift into a new way of getting out there with electric e-bike, such as the XP Lite, starting at just $799. Visit electricebikes.com to find the electric model for you. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C ebikes.com now back to the show um but then you have i'm not going to say it's evil or whatever because it's capitalism i believe in capitalism but you have people with money then going okay how can we predict what is going to be the trend and make money off of people coming into money well and with and instagram you can also make that you can drive a market too mm. sure the same yeah. way with the hype economy and whatever and influencers and so you can if you have a big enough audience buy in hype 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 and yep. then cash out yep it, it is totally possible yep. to do that well and there's plenty of that happening at the auctions too yeah. manipulation I yeah mean, let's tell me that the ferrari 599 that manual that sold at Gooding at Amelia Island, uh, or sorry, RM in 2000, I think it was 2016. And it went, it was the estimate was 100 to 120 or something like that. Or sorry, no, 200 to 220. And it went for 680. Yeah. And everybody well, in the room really is rare. laughing. But that set the trend for the manual gearbox Ferraris and Lamborghinis to go through the roof. Tell me that was a real sale. Well, no, oh, I, yeah, I know 682. I know for right? sure that someone who, 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 like, for instance, here's an example. 2014, I went to uh, RM at Pebble Beach, and there was a Hakoska Skyline, 72 Skyline GTR. Pre-auction estimate was like 110,000. And I was like, well, I, I, I could get that. I was like, I, I kind of wanted to like be in the game and and I was like, I could get that. It was the very first lot on Thursday, which is not good usually. <laughs> which is not good. <laughs> and I was like, I get, so I I got there. I got a bidder's pass. And I got in, and I was ready to go up to like 130 grand, and I did. And the car went for 245 thousand, which at the time blew apart estimates. I found out the guy who overpaid for it owned four of them already. And this Gee. was a public sale. And by yep. overpaying for this one, he was able to 
publicly pump the value of the assets he already owned. And that's not like criminal. It's just it's just how that system works right. when you don't have a major public sale. It's criminal a, if a bunch of corporations do it all together in mass. Yeah. But for some car collectors to do it, yeah, it, it's such a small market. That but also, is it not is it not predictable that stick shift Ferraris would become very desirable? Sure, I think that's kind sure. of predictable. Right. right? Yeah. Right. Well, then you got influencers like, look what Ed did with the Mercy Lago manual Mercies. You know, yes. he didn't even, in, I don't think he intentionally did anything. He just like, wow, these cars are rare. He, you know, published it, the rarity. Pub- published yeah. the rarity. And then, you know, that just drove yeah. the market. You know, well, like, it has all, all exotic cars get more, get A, faster than people know what to do with most people. They're there. And yeah. and B are so heavily integrated with computers and automation and hybridization and all this stuff. The the cars that are very analog but still reliable enough to be driven regularly. Though I, I'm not surprised that those are very valuable. I'm yeah. not. Well, people want yeah. that experience yeah. because you can't get that. Yeah, and you guys have driven those cars. They're pretty rad. Manual Mercy or a manual 430 or a manual yeah. 360. Manual DB9. Yeah, I mean, Put those plug are... plug in for mine here. Those are, those are pretty <laughs> rare. I mean, those are going up in value, I hear. A manual, <laughs> Not a manual yet, but they <laughs> should. There's manual only DB9 135 nice of them in North America. Is that all? That's Not all. Not total. All no. for all years? Man, all years, manual wow. DB9 coupes, there's 135. Really? They made heard three it here times for... more manual DBSs. Than manual DB9s, oh, that's even though they made five times more DB9s than DBSs. Wow! Oh, that's interesting. That could be the next big thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't realize they were that. Is there rare. a show about that that I could get on? <laughs> I don't work for it anymore, actually. <laughs> I don't. But it's probably pretty nice to drive, right? It's manual really, DB9. It's brilliant. probably nice, yeah. So it's the the first year they didn't even. It was all Touchtronic. They had Let's, no intention. Is it up of, on your? Is it up on Switch cars? No, it's not for sale. It's, oh, it's, it's plated. I paid sales tax on oh, it. Oh, it's your yeah, car. Yeah. yeah. No, it's actually not for sale. I just I bought it because one, I love them, uh, but it's it's a good looking car, and I had been pushing it to a bunch of my clients. I'm like, you really need to buy this. They're rare. They're gonna get. Uh, but here's the uh, catch on. Here's the uh, the curve at uh, classic dot com from oh, April. Yeah. That's a good curve. April 2020 to October today. Holy shit! If you bought in at April 2020, Whoa. 30k. That was, okay. that was probably an automatic. That was. Oh, you don't think? Oh, so? no, this is manual. Oh, this is divided uh, by manual. That's probably a shitter, but still. Yes. That's uh, that's not bad. Yeah. It's, it's looks, the, the line is going the right way. But no, they. Um, so in 06, they. Uh, uh, contracted with a company in Italy, Graziano, mm. to make them a gearbox. And it's a transaxle car, which the automatic is not. So it, it has better weight distribution than the automatic. It's lighter than the automatic. Uh, the gearing is better, so it's faster 0 to 60 than the automatic. So it flies in the face of everything in the early 2000s when Tiptronic and automatic cars were faster. Yeah. People wanted them because the magazine numbers, the test numbers were better. But the... Uh, the the manual gearbox is better in every respect. I actually think that's the same Graziano gearbox that they used for the very few manual Ferrari Californias also, which three, was three, right? I it's think they le- made I three. Th- I heard 10, but but it's very a very very small number. Yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, keep that one. That sounds cool. It's brilliant. But anyway, to go to circle back to where we were at, you've got the sort of car as an alternative investment thing that in some ways uh, does keep the, quote, true enthusiasts from enjoying the cars. But in other ways, can you can you blame, you know, they're not all pure investors. Some people just they want a sports car that they can enjoy and drive a bit and not lose money on because they're fucking expensive. Right. So I, I don't necessarily blame people that want to invest a portion of their money into cars. No, I, I don't either. I do it. And, I do it. No, I, I, <laughs> I'm guilty of what I preach against. Yeah. I think the frustration is is that the mindset has so pervaded people's minds that it, it just becomes an expectation. People yeah. call me up and they're like, well, I want a car I can not lose money on, like drive for free. I'm like, great. Isn't that nice to have wishes? We all do that. <laughs> yeah. like, well, no, no, no. That's not what I mean. It's like I'm not trying to make money. It's just you know, I, I just, I just don't want to lose money on a car. I'm like, 
Yeah, yeah. no kidding. We all want to drive exotic cars for free. <laughs> yeah. But you have to go into it with the expectation that this is going to cost money because it yeah. probably is. Yeah. Even if it goes up in value, it's not going to offset the opportunity cost. The insurance, and the, repairs, the, and the storage, insurance. the repairs, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, especially so if rare you're a to find a car. electric car storage. Thank it's, you. <laughs> it's so rare to find a car that will that will beat. Th- I mean, even here, look, I, you know, I, I don't tell my cu- my customers a few of, a few of the cars that here have a chance of appreciating at a rate that will offset what right. they're paying to store them here. A right. few, most yes. won't. And what I've found in my business, it's actually very interesting, is that. People who keep their cars here love their car very much, no matter what it is, and can afford to keep their car safe, cared for, whatever. But the value of that car is often totally divorced from it. We've got cars here that are worth north of half a million bucks, and we've got cars here that are worth under 30 grand. And those people pay the same amount of money every month, and they're equally happy to be here. Yep. You know, and sometimes the people with the really expensive cars are cheaper than the people with the cheap cars, <laughs> you know, when it comes to, to little things. Yeah. It's not one to one at all. Yep. And if you're looking to at, at an investment, you know, I can think of one customer in particular that I have and the and and he will probably he will probably make money. I don't want to say what the car is, but it's a known it's one of those cars where. It's a you 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 buy the car for MSRP. You have to jump through these hoops to get yep. it for MSRP, and it, there's a known flip at the end of that period that you're not supposed to sell it. There's a known market flip. Yep. And he's not driving it. It's in store. It's that's it, and that's yep. his only real cost. So yep. he could, he's done out the math, and at, once that period is over, I expect to never see that car again. Yeah. Um, but other than that, not really. So and that brings up a. I think an important point about cars as investments, most of it is timing, right? So you said correctly, there's a very few cars, blue chip cars, yeah. that over time will only increase in value. And I hate that phrase because every Facebook marketplace ad ever, <laughs> only going up in value, right? But McLaren F1, that yeah. will never go down in value. Yeah, 250 GTO probably will never go down yeah. in value. Um, but... For the rest of it, it's timing. You have to time it correctly. Mm-hmm. They're short-term plays. Even like and Muras, you know, have fluctuations. Yes. I mean, they're yeah. over over the long curve. You know, they're up, but but they went up to you know two five, and then they're down to one six, and blah blah blah. Yeah. And they go up and down. Yeah. Gull wings, you know, stuff that's stuff that's rare, but but not that rare. Right. Where it's rare, but there's always a couple of for sale. You but know, they in, go up in, and down. Uh, in stocks, right, 80% of day traders lose money, <laughs> yeah. and they're trying to time it. So if we extrapolate that over to cars, what do we think day traders with cars are going to do? Like, yeah, I, where you have I'm, to, we I'm have not to denying that cars on the can be investments, <laughs> but when you get a bunch of amateurs, when every car guy out there thinks, I can make money at this, yeah. you probably won't. So you're going to be disappointed if you go into it trying to make money versus going in saying, I love this car, yeah. and if it goes up in value. Do you know what I, I find the lesson that I've learned over and over and over and over and over is that miles are cheap. You know, yeah. whether you make money or lose some money or whatever, the actual miles you've put on the car for the most part are cheap mm-hmm. compared to insuring it, whether you drive it or not, servicing it, whether you drive it or not, the feeling, the vibes of the market, whether you drive it or not. Yeah. The miles are are a pretty known quantity and like they turn out to be cheap unless you put 200,000 miles on it on a Diablo or something, you know. And Even then, that could be a story. To, it, no, there, there was a, I remember uh, 10 years ago, there was a Gallardo Spider for sale back when they were still like depreciating from normal. Yeah. And the the cheapest one online was whatever, 125 or 225, yeah. whatever it was. You could always we'll, sell it to a we'll YouTuber. We'll say 125. <laughs> all, no, yeah. There's a yeah. YouTuber <laughs> floor. <laughs> They're all 5,000-mile cars. Yeah. And then there was one with like 50,000 miles. It was the only one, and it was like 20 grand less. Yeah. It's got a floor. It has a floor. And yeah. I'm going, that guy got the best yeah. per-mile 
value out yeah. of his car. Yeah, there He's was a car I used to talk else. about all the time that actually was up on Bring a Trailer, and it's, it is the very car I confirmed it that I had been talking about. It was a 02 or 03 Mercy manual red, and as of 06, when I last saw the car, the car had 60,000 miles on it in yes. 06. The guy was dailying it. And it serviced it. It was in great shape, but it was this dude's daily for like four years in the tri-state area, and like he then held on to it for a while longer, and it sold on Bring a Trailer for like strong fucking manual mercy money. Like that yeah. dude, he knew it. He was he was right there. Well, partly and, because the next guy goes one, it's been serviced. Two, I want to drive it too, yeah. and I can drive it without worrying about it. Cause yeah, like you said, they have a floor. Yeah. So sixty or a hundred thousand miles, yeah, doesn't. And then really if you matter. put enough miles on it, it becomes a, a a story on its own, right? A bragging item. Friend of mine had the highest mileage Ford GT in the country. How high was it? Um, in two thousand ten, it was like eighty thousand oh, miles. Good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Ford wanted to buy it back. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Just for like a a, a showpiece or a development to uh, analyze it. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Would be, I'd tell you, I'd lease it back. I'd go, been you could, wrecked I, twice. Yeah, <laughs> I go. I go. Give me fifty grand, and you can have it for a year, and give it back to me. Run your tests, and then yeah. give it back. Rebuild it. Yeah, yeah. rebuild yeah. it new. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I would do. I would do it for a free refreshing. Yeah, take it, analyze yeah. it, give it back to me, good as new. Yeah, that, I'd do. I'd take and that give me deal. a spot for the new Ford GT. I, yeah, I take. Well, that's <laughs> what um, my friend Carl Brower at Edmonds bought a 06 Ford or 04, for whatever Ford yeah, GT. 04, 05, 06. Put, yeah, yeah, put thirty thousand miles on it. Took it everywhere, drove it everywhere, loved it, brought it all over the place, and uh, and Ford gave him an allocation for the new GT. He then sold his blue car. That became Doug DeMuro's car, and Doug's put another twelve thousand miles on it. He's got forty something thousand miles That's on that awesome. on that blue car. It's great, and uh, and then and Carl has the new one, and I think he's got ten or fifteen thousand miles on it. He, I think he has one of the highest mileage. New GTs in the on the planet. That's fantastic. Yeah, the guy the guy loves fucking GTs, man. He's all about it. Which is cool. Well, the first gen was, they are great oh, cars. They were best. so good to drive. They're the best. They're awesome. One of the best road cars ever. Doors ever are terrible, made. but everything mm -hmm. else. Yeah. It's the only time a butterfly door conversion is an actual improvement. The yeah. Gennady <laughs> door conversion. I would do Ooh. dihedral. That's Oh, like is a that, Koenigsegg? No, no, no. Dihedral is the, the two hinges. It's the butterfly. The yeah, that, that's what they do. That's what okay. it is. Yeah, yeah. They, they do. Uh, Gennady Design made that. Okay. And then they did the GTX you butterfly, one. and I think of like Honda Civic. Oh yeah, Sorry. no the 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 yeah the pseudo scissor dihedral is right. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then they did the GTX one, the Targa roof, which those yeah. are worth a ton of money, which is kind of crazy. And that solves the door problem too, because you just leave the roof off. And is yeah. there? Have you seen it? Uh, the the dihedral door. Yeah, look at that. It looks really good. And it actually, oh, on a Quicksilver too. How yeah. about that? That is nice. Yeah, I don't know about that black scoop though. Black uh, scoop's uh, kind of killing it for me. Yeah, but, but the doors, but the doors are vastly improved by doing that. Yeah, opening opening that door. I mean, you can't, you can't be stinks. parked next to anybody, right? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Uh, those cars didn't sell new. Isn't it wild? Well, if it's you have a mohawk too, you could <laughs> accidentally shut the door. And off. We that's, were, that's when, when I was yeah. working at Gotham Dream Cars, nobody wanted to rent it either. Nobody wanted to pay fifteen, eighteen hundred bucks a day for a Ford. Yeah. And on the employees were all like, "Fucking jokes on you, fuckers! I'm going to drive this thing." Like. It was the best driving car we had, and we had Mercies, and we had Gallardos, and 430s, and everything from 06 that was dope, and this was the best of all of them. Yeah. It That's my so favorite good. supercar I've ever driven. They're so Because great. it has that feel of, like, a muscle car still. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. shifter's, like, perfect. Yeah. The steering is great. Ford Focus steering rack in the that The interior, car. though, still, still looks like the concept car, but it looks yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 They're, they're delightful. God help you if you need a gearbox. 30 G's. Yeah, but it should last a long time. They seem to be very, they very, are tough. very stout. They're, that's why they're so expensive, because yeah. they're tough and super smooth. Yeah. Uh, Ricardo made that gearbox. Kids, we got to take one more break for NASCAR, who are sponsoring today's show. The championship four drivers have been decided, and it's time to see 
Who has what it takes to crown themselves a champion of the NASCAR Cup Series forever? These stock car warriors have absolutely emptied the tank week after week, all season long, and there's one track left to prove that they deserve the title, Phoenix Raceway. A win here is more important than all the others for the top four drivers, and they'll do whatever it takes to hoist that championship trophy. Known for its signature dog leg section of the track, allowing drivers to fan out and race four or five wide, there will be no shortage of excitement all afternoon long. Check out the historic NASCAR 75th anniversary season, which is all coming down to this. Don't miss out. Tune in to the NASCAR Cup Series Championship at Phoenix, Sunday, November 5th, 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific on NBC and Peacock. Now, back to the show. Best. Um, I saw one on eBay once, and it was $38,000. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I had an alert set up for 4GT Ricardo <laughs> Gearbox, but um, they were, yeah, man, if you could have bought one of those new and held on to it, that is just free every mile free yeah. every single oh mile a hundred thousand on that thing and you'd st- and you'd still still making money yeah and there's some oddballs too like ctsv wagons you know you could you could have put an infinite number of miles on those for free pretty much yeah. yep yeah they're in great. a six speed yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah manuals of yeah course. it's manuals. like double the value yeah of isn't automatics. that crazy yeah um so what is so you said before you, you touched on it for a second random things are hitting right now yeah. Nine nine sevens across the board. Yep, they nine sort of, they sort of bounced the at the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the the Honda NSXR mm-hmm. <laughs> is through the roof. I, I think there might be. I'm not going to say manipulation there, but there's people invested in those doing well. Um, Lamborghinis are continuing to go up. The the manual Mercies and Diablos yeah. and stuff like that, but. Um, Ed made a good point about those is is Doug DeMuro did his his market cap video. Uh-huh. Basically which is said, smart. Yeah, there's there's a, a a market cap around which all supercars circle and according to his calculations the Lamborghini manuals, the Diablos and Mercies were still short of that mm-hmm. market cap. Diablos it seems have been undervalued for a very long right. time, especially the early ones, which I don't like how they drive, but just on a rarity level, they shouldn't be under two hundred thousand. Doesn't make any sense. Right. Well they're not anymore. Oh they're not? But it's like even, a ninety one even, even comparable like... to X J two twenties and E B one tens and some other supercars from the nineties that are highly unusable and approaching or exceeding a million bucks. Yeah. And for a while you could buy any variant Diablo except like an S E or something or GT for three, four hundred K. Yeah. That didn't make sense. Yeah. It was it was strange. Yeah. And I think it was because like I only know one person that will touch a Diablo. <laughs> like, like a D, the dealers here were like, fucking no. Donnie, who works on my Lambo, is like, no Diablos, senor. Why? I don't They're know. They're not that. Un- I don't know. I, there's, I, something, uh, there's something about them, the ECUs or something, that they don't want any maybe part of. Do you, know, do you know what it those is? Those early electronic cars can be tough. Okay. So you know, you need also like they, special computers. Because it's the, something the different. Ones my co- my stuff, Countach so. is Bosch K Jetronic, like pure '80s generic injection system. Anyone right. can do it. Right. But I think they then went to something proprietary. Yeah, I was just a curated, and they've got some like old ass laptop with you know. It was like I think it was a '91 Diablo. They yeah, were yeah. they were working on and. Yeah, Kim yeah, like, and Curated will work on them, mm, but yeah. even they are like Tamarians, like oh boy, another one of these. <laughs> but I think that things. causes. A lot of friction for someone shopping for something for sure. like that, right? And then to go back to you, they they made 134 EB110s, but they made nearly 3,000 Diablos. So right. Well, EB110 EB110 is a is a is an ex- a very rare example, but sure. but still 3,000 Diablos over 11 years. 11 years, yeah. I mean that's of not that's not very many, it's and there's a lot, lot of, of sub variants of Diablos. Yeah. A lot of different years, like. Like six O's and SEs or and uh, SVs and stuff. Well, They're but even rare. even look at it now, and, and I, you can pick apart this 
comparison easily, but an F40, they made 1,300 yeah. of those. Those are $3 million. Yeah. That's not 10x the car of mm. a Diablo. Yeah. Now, there's other reasons that Ferrari Halo cars are going up in value because it buys you into the Ferrari, yeah. you know, F40s mafia, are, but, and by the numbers, are surprisingly common compared to, yeah. like an F40 is only slightly rarer than my Aston Martin Vanquish first gen. Yeah. You know, like they made 1,600 of those and 1,300 F40s. Yeah. And my Aston Martin is worth $85,000. Like, <laughs> it's not like it. Do you think that's an effect of the Ferrari, like, marketing and the racing and everything? Like, it just has it has sure. far more brand cachet cause Lam- than Lamborghini does. Well, those it's also, are- like, the one of, if not the raw, rawest semi-modern car they've ever made. You know, it's got right. a string to open the door. It's got Lexan right. well, It was the first carbon fiber tubbed car, right? Uh, was it? A, was it F forty a carbon tub? I don't think it was. I think yeah. F fifty was. No, F40. no, that F40 was. was a carbon tub. Yeah, as far as I remember, it's the first carbon fiber tub car. That's oh, okay. what makes it so special because like mm-hmm. nothing really existed. I know a carbon like an body. F forty. I know the clam. The rear clam is carbon, but I thought it was on the same tubular I, frame on. as I think a there was as one a two eighty eight. I just read about this the other day, but I can't remember what it was. Or maybe so it's just debate maybe that's that. just the the common <clears throat> thing that they say the F forty was. It might maybe yeah. there's some obscure other All ones. Carbon Zach fiber seems to be or studying. Maybe it's the first carbon yeah. fiber one because they had different variants of of carbon. Yeah, because there was carbon Kevlar for certain and stuff. It also says there yeah. was aluminum used, but I'm not sure. Um, I'll, I'll find it. All right, whatever. Anyway, um, um, but no, it, the, their Ferrari is brilliant, and Porsche followed suit brilliantly with the 918 VIP program in that Ferrari has created a caste system within yeah. their customers. Right. Um, even I've heard at, at their big thing in Europe, they have like literally numbers, like y- y- your client number seven. Uh-huh. And guys are like, well, how do I get to number six? Well, that guy's number six. He races all the time in the Ferrari Challenge, and he's got the FXX, and he's got this and that, and he orders two hundred thousand dollars in options on every car he buys. So you gotta you gotta pass him, <laughs> you know. And that's yeah. the the way high level, but yeah, that's yeah. trickled down. If you want a special car, they've they've followed to the, their model of producing one less than than the market will demand. Mm-hmm. Officially, and then they actually produce thirty more, <laughs> and yeah. then we find out because Carbon McCoy documents it. But, <laughs> but, yeah. but at least what they publish and and how they run it is is you can't get a car. So they they they're brilliant, and that's helped out. I think their supercar values, yeah, and and uh, their collector values. They're great at making. You, us think that every single model is extremely special. And like you said, Porsche did the same thing of, hey, these are yeah. super rare. Like, how rare? Like, don't worry about it. There's only 100 available this month. Like, if you ask what about next month, they go, no, no, no. Don't, don't ask. But right now, there's 100. <laughs> but I mean, they, they I make think as Porsche many as will want. at least say, like, with the Dakar and, and the, the ST and True. stuff, they've said, we're making this many. But I think the RS is... And the, and the GT3 Touring, they're very good at that's true. M- at making it seem like they're incredibly scarce, which they are at that moment, but not right. in terms of production. But then they make another one, yeah. another yeah. one. It's I, I I my favorite line that I came up with. And it's my own favorite line. Is that the, there's no limit to the number of limited edition yeah. models Porsche will make. Yeah. <laughs> so limited by as many as we can sell. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, to the number of different sure, ones. Like, oh, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Like they can. They can a 40th uh, anniversary and a 42nd an- anniversary and a, you know. Someone DM'd me on Inst- and they I get a lot of stupid DMs, but someone DM'd me and saying they have a, a this 992 Le Mans 100th, 100th Le Mans edition car. Yeah. And they want to sell it. And it's it's a Carrera S or it's a, maybe it's a GTS with it's painted in some PTS plus color and it's got some badges on it. But, like, that's it. It's just a GTS painted. Yeah, you can find it very easily. And there's only one of them. But, like, it's just painted in a fucking color and has a couple badges. There's, yep. It's not the Sally Carrera, and it's not some fucking race car or anything. It's just a paint-to-sample car. Yeah. And they said, I'm ask, I'm looking for a million dollars. Okay. And I, and I opened. <laughs> so this here's is, the that's thing. It. That's I guarantee it. you they didn't even own it. Yeah, no, they probably didn't. They, mm. they were just trying to flip it and, you know. 
They were trying to broker it, but it's just yeah. it's just a silver car with a number on the side of it and and some badges. Like it's not even a good paint to sample car color. Yeah, that's and not. so they were like they wanted a million dollars for this car, and I openly laughed at this person, and they were like, <laughs> "What do you mean?" I was like, "That's straight garbage. Like that's that that's not that's, that's you ridiculous. might find someone very stupid to pay a million dollars for that car, and there are very well, stupid people. Much, yeah, but like." Maybe they will. Maybe oh, they'll they get have a million it next bucks to the 356 SL. Oh, oh yeah. that oh, means that makes yeah. it special. I am making the connection. <laughs> oh, it has the same number on the side. <laughs> yeah, same, same, yeah, me, same it, meatball. Doesn't same, it same. look the same? Yeah, yeah. But like, oh my gosh. But yeah, next year it'll be like, the sport design edition. The yeah. next year it'll be something else. And, and he was like, "Well, what would you pay for it?" And I was like, "Sticker." That's what I said. <laughs> I said, "I said MSRP for a GTS minus one dollar because I don't like the color." Like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, Do you have a standard color one? Those are more rare than paint to sample now. <laughs> Give me one of frozen berry metallic. Can I have uh, white? Yeah. Carrera yeah. white. Oh, man. Oh, here's a question for you. I went to a Cars and Coffee this morning, and it was a great Cars and Coffee. So did we accidentally. Where did you yeah. go? Uh, uh, 405 Motoring. It was We oh. turned left out of the rental car spot. We saw a GT3, and it was like... Uh, yeah, we made it 50 feet. Yeah. Shout out to 405. They do my paint protection film. They, yeah, they nice did, facility. They did my, the PPF on my NSX that you just saw downstairs. Lovely people. Shout out to East and his team at 405 Oh, I was kind of ticked off. They didn't give us priority parking in our Nissan Altima. <laughs> <laughs> it's an SR, too. Uh, yeah. It is an SR. Super race. And uh, and yeah, but it's they're right by race. where you get the rental cars. It's got cars. the flat bottom steering wheel, leather. <laughs> Did you know the yeah, race car? So when you're reclining, you can grab it like this, you know. <laughs> it's the fastest car in the world. Uh, it's an Altima it's a and a rental. rental. Oh yeah, yeah. A double. In order, in order to drive that, you need to be out of good things happening in your life. <laughs> well, it's the super <laughs> reckless model. <laughs> Pretty much. Super, super reckless. reckless. That's right. I had to turn off the driver aids though. Like in, it's got the like lane departure warning. I had uh -huh. to turn off all those, and I had to turn off run from police mode. <laughs> it's, it's a CVT too, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you will get, like, 40 miles a gallon. It's shockingly efficient, that car. I drove one in Texas, and it was terrible, but very efficient. Um, so I went to a Cars and Coffee this morning in Rancho Santa Fe down by uh, San Diego. It was lovely. Saw some 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 great people, some really cool cars, and, and I liked that Cars and Coffee a lot. But there was a, uh, uh, a car there that was advertised uh, for sale. And it was advertised as resto modded. Okay, that was the sheets. A resto modded car. What year would you draw the line at the newest? The, what is the newest year that you would say is acceptable to refer to a car as resto modded? Oh, oh man. Uh, right. This is this is a real question. So. So a car newer than X should never be referred to so as resto let's, modding. Let me let me make sure we're operating on the same terms because I've thrown around the term resto mod lately on some social media videos and people are like, no, that's a resto mod. I'm like, no, it's not because it's period parts. Okay, that's mm. yeah, sure. Resto mod, the mod is for modern. Am yeah, I sure. Correct. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like yes. updated yeah. stuff. Yep. Okay, sure. I just want to make yep. sure we're. Right. I agree. Yeah, the, same it, it, the car has been uh, refreshed and then updated with some modern, okay. modern stuff. Right. But what is the newest car where you would find it acceptable to call that methodology of resto? Modding? I've got an answer. Okay. What do, do you what, what do you okay. say, Arnie? I just want to make sure that he was. Yeah. I didn't want to be writing down. His, yeah. We no, have, it's not a secret yeah, pass game. It, pass it. What do you? What I would, would say you ninety two or ninety three. Okay. And what mm, would you say? I said ninety. Ninety. I was going to say eighty six. Okay. I think I, I personally would say, uh, yeah, or 90, 90, you know, you, like a Fox body or an IROC yeah. is that's about, a that's, motor and a that's Fox about body. where I would end that. You put a right? that's modern right? that's AMG exactly engine in an R129, yeah. something like that. That's about where, so let's, yeah. let's just say 30 like years. 30 years, mm -hmm. 30 years, right? This sign was on a 2006 Boxster. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> they had the updated L and N engine bearing. That's it what was it was. Automatic. Oh uh, no! Not, was it, not wait, was PDK. it pastel yellow? No, it was like okay. a green, and it it had uh, some aftermarket wheels on it. And and I I stopped reading the rest of it, but I saw resto modded, and then looked at the car that was. And I was like, 
yeah, that doesn't uh, that doesn't work for me. And I, I thought, what did they say was rest them on it? Did they put like a nine nine six? I wish I took or? a photo. No, no, no. <laughs> Believe me, they did. I don't. It think was so. wheels. It looked. All I could see was wheels. It can't be as bad as that boxer that floated out there. It was for sale on Marketplace for a while. And it was like the, the Boxster GT2 RS 918 Spider oh, Edition. Oh, I remember that thing. Yeah. And it had all the freaking parts on it, but still had the 2.5 yeah, liter flat yeah. six it in it. It was not good. It was not good. No, it wasn't good. And we I, we see that. I see fake GT cars all the time. Yeah. Um, but like this one, just the use of that term, I was like, that is, that is not Mm-mm. right. No. Uh, no. But there was some good shit. At that. I saw Doug's Countach, and it's a very nice example. The paint is good. The other Doug. The, just Doug so we're clear Doug DeMuro's Countach, yeah. Yeah. But you bought a 6.0, right? Yeah. And is it is it great? It's fantastic. Is it everything you hoped it would be? It is, yeah. Yeah. The, the dashboard is, is like three acres. Is it red? Uh, orange. Oh, it's yeah, good. Yeah, it's oh, it's, it's That's a good color. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. really is. And it's pearlescent. Like, it's it's not just orange. Like, it's like Audi painted it. <laughs> it's like it's like a sunset kind yeah. of. You know, it's it's great. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, I've taken a, a couple road trips. It's comfortable. Works properly. Yeah, those. Are, that's like. It's that's actually kind of easy to back up. Yeah. I still do the Valentino Balboni thing just for a crowd pleaser. Yeah. Although the last time I did it. I was under a little bit of pressure, and I still had it in first. Yeah. And so I'm, like, looking backwards, and it oh, lurches forward, no. and so I stall it. <laughs> so I I don't do the sit on the sill thing. And the reason I don't do it is because if I sit on the sill and my my feet are where they need to be to operate the pedals, I can't really reach the shifter. And so now, okay, I put it in reverse. I sit on the sill with my foot on the clutch. N- then what? Then what yeah, do something I, happens. Then what do I do? <laughs> then I'm kind of stuck there. Yeah, you can't screw up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whereas if I just do this and maybe have someone spot me and lean yeah. out the door, I can usually... Are the mirrors useless? Side mirrors? Pretty useless. Oh, okay. Yeah, pretty... They don't, like... Yeah, they're no, pretty... I mean, obviously, they don't, they're not electronic, but, like, no, if no. you aim them, you know, nah, when you get the not, car... They're not very good. Okay. They're, yeah, you, they don't really, like... They're, they're very small and... They're pretty shitty, yeah. and and also you're you sit in that car pretty inboard, yeah, and so you're just your angles and the and hips are so much wider than the yeah. mirror, so it's just like this perspective thing. Yeah, the but, best move is to just literally for me to just lean out the door and look back. That's the best move, I think. The six O at least has a center mirror that's usable because yeah. it doesn't have the huge air scoops that the SV does, so I can see back. Fine. Oh yeah, the SV um, has the the intakes that block the whole rear window, right? Yeah, that's yep. not great. <laughs> yep. And the VT has uh, uh, the VT Roadster you can't see because yeah, because the top sits yep. there. Yeah. And the SE you can't see. And uh, well, mine most uh, you Doug's can't. has a uh, is a carbed car, so it has a flat engine cover, mm-hmm. and it's an eighty three, so it has no third brake light. Mine mm-hmm. is an injected car, so it's got the humps on the engine cover for the valve covers and it has a third brake light so the rear window is like you know 18 inches by eight inches but like three quarters of it is just blocked by shit it's just not good ah diablo 60 do you just have a wing yes i think that yeah. carlo i think diablo mine has the sv wing. style wing oh, okay cool which i like better i don't yeah. like the squared off wing um, those things and are... people keep telling me well that's not that's not original right it's the wrong wing and i'm like Get me a build sheet. Yeah. Right? Lamborghini's records were so terrible at that time. And they were, I mean, they weren't a parts bin car like Ferrari's were. No, but they would just do shit. Right. And I'm like, tell me with certainty that that's not the right wing. Come on. Lamborghini doesn't even know. Do you, I have, I got it from curated as kind of a, a, I mean, it was, it didn't cost them anything, but it was kind of a gift. I have a, a scan of the Lamborghini factory floor. Uh, build list Mm -hmm. and it's literally a spiral notebook and they hand wrote VIN numbers 
and what the it was read you know blah 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 VIN number uh, built on this date uh, it's red gold tan and here's the here's the here's where it's going and it's signed off by the foreman and it's literally a fucking spiral notebook and I have did you buy it from them or no no they just they they have okay. the book and they sent me a scan of the page where my car is which is just a cool thing to have see I I think they are keeping that info close to the chest for. You know, the in real estate, the the person who has the upper hand is the one who has the the information disparity. Right. And I've hinted about selling the Diablo a couple times, um, if if a suitable replacement came up. So I think John wants the upper hand there for me not to know what it's equipped with oh, originally. That's interesting. Well, this all this doesn't it doesn't it's not a complete build sheet. It's gotcha. just VIN, color, interior. Um, destination of the you know you des- us and whatever the importer's name was that's it it's literally so one just a cool memento it's just have. a cool memento and it shows that my what day my car was built on and who the 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 that the color the interior and the wheels are that and that that's it it doesn't I show would anything think else by the time the Diablo the late Diablo, they would have a well, you're little the, bit better. Yeah, because the six O was Audi was involved yes. by then, and they're not putting up with spiral <laughs> notebooks. <laughs> yeah, no, this is fucking. Still cool. can't get a build sheet. <laughs> it's crazy. I'll send you the photo of it. It's fucking. <laughs> you can't believe that this company that's building these cars, which at one point were the fastest car in the world, they had a spiral notebook in the factory to keep track of all of it. It's got to be no backup. I mean, for this Ferrari thing. sold yeah. off their records to Marcel Massini. Oh, did they? They really? So, yeah, that's how he's got all of his stuff. Oh, that's so they interesting. They tried to buy it back at one point, and he's like, heck no. Oh, Wait, why did they sell it to him? I, it was Ferrari. They, I don't know, the money. somebody else yeah, owned they were, Fiat they at they the time broke. or whatever, they were, and they're just like, ah, whatever, these boxes are over here. Who wants them? That's so funny. <laughs> I don't know what we did with it. Where is that box? <laughs> what happened to the box? It was in the corner. I don't know. You why is all this shit on eBay for $10,000? Every no, accent I do turns Middle into Eastern. Middle Eastern. <laughs> yeah. Just, just what happened to me. Like, what? It's just what Get with the program, Doug. I, I can't do <laughs> Every accent is a Middle Eastern accent for me. It just happens. Just let it, just let it go. <laughs> Speaking of right quick detour, the frame on the F40 was steel space frame. Yeah, it was the same as the 328. Tub, yeah. yeah, same as the 308, 328. So it had yeah, carbon yeah. doors and then uh, Kevlar shit. I think it was the. It might have had the largest carbon Kevlar panel at the time, or the first carbon Kevlar panel, because that whole clamshell is carbon Kevlar. Um, but yeah, I don't. I think the first tub. Might have been someone is like screaming at their fucking eye. eye I, I literally right just now, read this within the last week in a book or a magazine is or it, something. Can you just, and I don't remember. Just what search it was. for the first carbon tub car, uh, road car. I, it was um, when I was reading about the Carrera I think it was GT. Maybe XJR15. Wasn't the Carrera GT you're right? XJR15. First production car with carbon fiber uh, monocoque design was the XJR15. XJR15. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which I'd mm. love to try one. You ever try one of them? No. I'd love to have a fucking... They sound good, though. They sound crazy. I don't even know if I could get another in Another car, I remember, when it was a hundred grand and nobody wanted them, and <laughs> yeah. now they're over a million. Yeah. That's another car that I look at and go, Diablo XJR15. Diablo's yeah. more usable. Why is this one 4X? I mean, yeah. great, they're more rare, yes. Yeah. But Ooh, it's it, so pretty. XJR15s are, pretty. are very, very pretty. Yeah. I've heard everyone I know who's driven one says they're death traps really yeah and i mean i've heard that about a variety of cars that if you're driving it just to cruise around in and and play that it's probably fine but like people who drove the racing versions were like oh fucking hell no they were awful but But at this point there was a yellow one at audrain yeah yep yeah yep somebody uh was it was it ivanhoe somebody i knew had one Oh no! You know, I I know who it is. I'm not going to say. Had one that had been disassembled from new and was in pieces and crates. They had a complete car with no miles on it, disassembled in crates. Sweet. It's over in England, yeah. And he's sitting on that motherfucker. So what? This is what ninety one, ninety ish, early nineties. I think it was nineteen ninety. Ninety ninety one. The... Yeah. Or did I just close here? Yeah. And I'm pre- I feel like it was engineered by Walkinshaw. I don't even know if Jaguar themselves had anything to do with this car. I think yeah, it, it was 90 because then the EV1 was 91. Yeah, and that was carbon also. Yeah. We were talking last show with uh, Lieberman about XJSs and how I want like a resto mod XJS. Like I think that would be real cool. 
but it can't be newer than a 91 XJS. <laughs> yes, or it's yes, not a Resto yes, mod. Thank you very That's much. been settled. Totally true. <laughs> yes, exactly. You, you heard it here. No, folks. you know, I want the eight, I want him on an 80s with buttresses, you know, the whole shit. The one like yep. from the movie Speed Zone with oh, yeah. uh, the blue. You know, it's got to be that. Yeah. Just re What Speed motor Zone. would you put in it? We were having this debate. I like. I like the idea of a BMW S54. I think that would be okay. fun. Um, su a Supra motor, uh, you know, a, a 2J would be fun. Sure. Um, I don't know. What would you put in one? Oh, LS, of course. <laughs> That's the easiest. <laughs> but, if you look, but I like the idea of the inline six because the later XJs yeah. were inline six. There's so a bunch of them that sold that. on at auction, you know, for cheap that had LS swaps. There, it, it, so there's a clearly a kit. For that, and it can yeah. be done pretty easily. I know a bunch of people that did LT swaps. Right. I would not do that. But, yeah. But um, I, have some of my, I think an S54 would be pretty. Remember because they did the, the James Bond uh, stunt cars for the last Bond movie, and they were all DB5s with S54 BMW powertrains underneath? I feel like that would be kind mm -hmm. of the move. I think you're onto something. Right? Yeah, LS is just too played out. And that's mm -hmm. me saying that. I. It's a highly anything. functional <laughs> swap, but like I'm not yeah. going for function. I'm going for no, the you emotion. Need that, you need that exotic sound. Yeah, that's that's. Well, the I, I had a guy come into my sound. shop. Yeah, if you could, like, yeah, I mean, if yeah. you could get like an a S65 with something. Uh, oh, like, like a BMW V8. Yeah, like oh, a small displacement V8. Oh, that, that could be really fucking high. cool. You know, something like that. Out of like an E93. E90. Yeah. Oh, that could be pretty sweet. The V12 is the right thing to do. Like, get a Mercedes V12. Like, I have a, a Mercedes V12 you know, is so huge, you can't put yeah. it into anything yeah. else. You can with They're fabrication. They're huge. <laughs> Cutting wheel. <laughs> That's an enormous <laughs> motor. Yeah. So, speaking of swaps, I had a guy come into my shop the other day. Um, it, it was the weirdest interaction we've had in 20 years. I'll I'll save you. And all this is of you it. talking. Yeah, you pro are. probably the weirdest, and maybe a couple others. But um, the guy just walked in, announced he was there. That people called and and said he was coming, so we should be ready for him. And he wanted to buy this Ferrari, uh, but he had to leave with it at three p.m. that day. And this was a bank holiday, so there's like no way he could pay us. Hmm. Um, Suspicious. You come in with a suitcase full of cash, <laughs> which you verify right. is yeah. real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like the guy was legit. He had bought a number of cars from the local alpha dealer, but he was just off his rocker, nut job. Mm -hmm. And um, he didn't acknowledge any of us as humans. He just started talking at us. Uh, one of my other guys came into the office. He's like, what do you want to do here? I heard the whole conversation. I'm like, I got this. I walked out. The other guy went into his office, and he didn't even acknowledge that we were different people. He just <laughs> continued the conversation <laughs> where he left off. And I'm like, holy crap. But anyway, he was. it, it was a Ferrari 360 Spider, and he was buying it for his six-year-old son because his six-year-old son's favorite color was blue. Six? Yeah. Oof. Um, and he's like, well, it doesn't matter because it's probably going to get, you know, traded out a couple times by the time he can drive anyway. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to buy 11 acres in Hilton Head and build a racetrack there. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> on Hilton Head. Yeah, but, good luck, bro. Yeah. Uh, on 11 acres? <laughs> yeah. That's not, that's not uh, go enough. Go-kart track, maybe. Yeah. Um, but, um, and he was going to put like a trailer park there, too. I Anyway, but he was going to engine swap this 360 Spider for the Alpha Quadrifolio motor. Okay. Because he's like, well, it's the same engine, it's just six cylinders instead of eight. And they make way more power and they're more efficient. I'm like, okay, uh, bro. I don't think that's true. <laughs> I, was, I mean, it does make more power. It is more efficient, but I don't think that that's a related engine family either. But go on. Listen, there was, there was, <laughs> I said about 20 words. <laughs> yeah. There was no debating him about anything and there was no point. So that's I just, I'm crazy. Like, you're, you're All right. nuts. Okay. But so why did he need it by three o'clock that day? I don't know. Just because that he had to pick somebody up at the airport. His and kid was flying in. It's his birthday and he forgot. No, his kid his was birthday. there with him. Oh, it was. It was very odd. He didn't, something was, was odd. Like the kid looked like he was like, not all there, tripping out a little bit or something. It was okay. It was, Did it he was buy the car? Weird. No. Oh. No, because he's like, well, I have to go because I got to go back to the Alpha dealer and then I'll come back and get it. And this is like an hour left. He's got to go half an hour away and come back half an hour, execute a wire transfer on a bank holiday, and then get to the airport by three thirty. Yeah. No. Nah. 
I look forward to trying his racetrack. On but Hilton he was Hilton. very demanding. And he's like, well, if this doesn't work, I'm going to buy this yellow Ferrari in Youngstown today. And I plan on spending $4 million on cars this week. I'm like, cool. All right. Did you call the Ferrari Prob- place in probably Youngstown? Probably not Did he here. Buy from them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no yellow Ferraris in Youngstown, I can tell you that. that... <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, sometimes folks uh, are on their own thing, you know? I wonder. But he's their own beating... thing is cocaine. Could be. Could be. I got to go trade in these 10 Stelvios real quick. Get cash for them. I'll come back to you by this Ferrari, and then I got to go to the airport. I That's did, the thing. I did I mean, drive a private racetrack a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah? Will Ziggs. Yeah, up in, uh, up in upstate New York. Oh, yeah. The guy built a racetrack in his backyard. He's got a couple hundred acres, but it is a legitimate racetrack. That's it awesome. Amazing. Yeah, it's nuts. It's exactly what I would do with all that money. <laughs> Every, everything this guy has done with all that money. He is a very extravagant guy. Oh, yeah, he's crazy. He's out of his mind. I love him, but he's just, he, he is nuts. His McLaren is wrapped like a peacock. Literal, a literal peacock. Does but, it have oh, yeah, like this feathers was coming up from the rear? No, or? but it's wrapped like it. It yeah, it has feathers on it. Like they come up for the air brake. <laughs> it probably does. Wait, if it, it's in this shot, it, right? Uh, oh no, it wasn't. Nope. Never mind. Sorry. But this is the track. Uh, there it's it was. Narrow. That was it right there. Um, no, that's the road going to the track. Okay. Let me see if there's a actual video. Uh, if this video continues, he chases the. Lotus oh, does he chase the Lotus? So this is the this is the pit lane. Okay. Uh, to go up onto the track, and holy from above, moly! Spit, turn back around, drone. That's his jet ski lake. So he has the jet ski lake, and come oh, go I'll back find, to the track. I can find an overhead shot then. Go back to the track. Go up. Uh, is there another shot? The, uh, well, oh. that you can see it there. That is. That's it. That's the track. 1.2 miles, plenty of an 80 feet of elevation change. Isn't that rad? In your backyard. In your backyard. That's his house is right uh, in that little grove of trees next to the lake. Does he Airbnb that crap? <laughs> no, but if you're like the homie, you can go play. Oh, but there's Drift Manor. Have you heard of that place? There, have you seen the yeah? The yes. Drift, you can't I was thinking manage, about I think. renting Drift. that out next year for ber- it, uh, 40th birthday. Dude, if you want to do it, I would love to join you at the Drift Mansion. Sounds I will, good. I will get an appropriate vehicle and uh, and come out there. Well, Where you is have it? to get special permission to bring your own vehicle. So oh, he, really? He's a pro drifter, and so he, like part of the thing is, well, you can have rides, but I'm gonna email and be like, hey, listen. I don't know if you know who I am, but I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> so, can I bring my own car? <laughs> where? Oh, book your. Go to book your stay at the top left there. Let's see. Oh, this let's is do a it. house. Let's pick a date. I don't actually know where it is. It's Little Talladega. Little Talladega. It's called it's Six in G's for two nights. In it's Missouri. near St. Louis, I think. All right. So, Pomona, Missouri. It's got all kinds of stuff a dirt circle track, 8,500 square foot home with a gym, arcade. Movie Pool theater, hall, et cetera. Go karts, uh, drift carts, drift <laughs> stuff. We just buy the house. Gel so, blasters, whatever those so, are. So, all right. So we have you. You really have to get permission to bring your own cars. Yes. Oh, that's unfortunate. I I'm pretty probably, sure we can you pull could this probably off. do it though. Yeah. 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 This is I'll just two nights for the. I mean. You get a bunch of people and we it's can It's way cars, overpriced. Nobody should that book it next fall. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's true. It's too expensive. I mean, it's pretty cool though. Yeah. Maximum occupancy twenty. What? So at twenty, it's that's three hundred bucks for two nights if you that's, actually did twenty. Here's the thing though. So I want to rent it for like a week. Yeah. Because I'm like two nights. You can't even. We're not even going to watch a movie there. If you yeah. want to use all the stuff. Yeah. Let's make it a guys. You know, guys going fishing and hunting trips. They're gone for twenty days. No, this you is know? fantastic. Yeah. So. Man. And the cars will be broken after day two. Then you watch movies. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's when you start using the actual house. Yeah, yeah. It looks it looks like a good time. I've seen it on Instagram a bunch. It seems yeah. uh, it seems like a good time. For yeah. Sure. So that's that's the the general plan next fall. For maybe my, Zach. My maybe we, oh, we do not pers- we do not allow use of full size vehicles or street vehicles on the track. Certain situa- situations we allow invested drift car pilots to bring their own equipment. There's an application for this. Cars must be caged and are subject to tech inspections. Yeah. You must contact us prior to. Because I think follow. some, of, I think Danger Dan went out there, and some other people have gone out there and done content stuff, and they drove mm-hmm. their own cars. Yeah, but they also had you know racing licenses or something. Yeah, if you, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a way to do this, and I'm sure that 
paragraph. Yeah, well, is I'm the cannonball record every holder, idiot so come wants on. To, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure that if you are the right type of person with the right type of car, which we are, and okay. or followers on <laughs> social media, <laughs> yeah. here's my guest list. <laughs> Does this? Yeah. Uh, does but if this we go, if you cage? want to go to upstate New York with me, we can uh, we can go play at uh, Mr. Wilzig's place. Too. I mean, if we can have my 40th birthday week there, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> maybe he that's let us a suitable maybe replacement. Maybe let us just like yes. pitch tents on the property, we drop some RVs and Burning Man. Yeah, we'll rent RVs. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is? Uh, so that was the story about the guy and the six year old. That's weird. But what? Let me ask you something. In the last ten years or so. What car have you bought for purposes of selling that you thought would be a good a good thing to have in the inventory that you've either gotten stuck with or had to take a bath on to get rid of? Mm. Any big stinkers? Yeah, a couple. One was a Resto Mod. It was a '63 Corvette. That was so the not biggest a stinker. Okay. No, um, um, but it was '63 Corvette I, Resto. I, I that learned, doesn't seem like it should be that unsellable. Well, it was because it wasn't the right kind of Resto mod, and and I learned what I already knew is anytime you veer outside your lane, you can get burnt because mm-hmm. if you don't know what everybody else knows, then y- you miss. Right. You can get lucky, but. Um, I didn't. Yeah. And it was a really, really nice car. It had slightly flared fenders. It had um, modern brakes, Will Woods, whatever. Um, but the engine was built by a local like Corvette conspiracy or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a, a period correct engine. And it made like seven, eight hundred horsepower, made it reliably. It was fuel injected. It had this NASCAR staged uh, traction control system. So it, it was manageable power. It was fantastic to drive. But all the cars bringing big money were tubbed LS swapped cars. Mm-hmm. So it was like nobody gave a crap about this car because it, th- wasn't it an LS. didn't have the th- three check boxes that they wanted. Uh-huh. So it was a really, really hard sell. Huh. And I think I paid ninety for it. I had it for three years, <laughs> and um, yeah, I think I sold it for like seventy. Oh yeah, that's not great. So when that, was the that car was a built? stinker. I don't remember because that's that's like a that's like a weird time when like Rusto Mod really wasn't a thing quite yet. A guy have a friend yeah. that has a similar car that he built it, but he built it in like the late nineties. And he's been toying around with selling, but he doesn't know what it's worth. And I'm just like, people want LS stuff. They want like this modern yeah. fuel injected stuff, not even though well, it's reliable and, and it's great. And that stuff is, is a, there's trends to it, right? And so if you build something yep. that's kind of on trend and then 15 years later, it basically needs to be rebuilt again. There's yeah. not there's not a lot of value you in You do have that. a perfect resto Speaking mod of here. resto mods, oh so that is a, oh, that's that a one really looks really nice. This 60, 65 so... fastback resto mod, yeah. that's a good looking one. There's a lot of ways to do those right. Yep, and that one, this one sort of looks GT three fifty ish. Yep. Um, I don't know what's the story on that? That's, I like, that's like, a look nice, at this. That's a nice looking car. It, it's got a Ford Racing three eighty three crate engine yeah. and the Borla eight stack fuel injection system huh. on oh, that's it. So it sounds right. Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Five hundred horsepower. This is. But that's so a, speak, that's a good speaking one. of resto mods, this is an and interesting couples. trend I'm seeing is that resto mods are going for more than original cars now in a lot of scenarios. And I like that trend because it tells me that people are buying the cars for driving purposes. Mm -hmm. Because 60s Corvettes, Thunderbirds, Camaros, any 50s, 60s muscle car is not a good car to drive. Yeah. Um, European cars were far better. Yeah. But... Um, when when people are buying cars from these companies that are dedicated, they've come up with a, a formula to modernize them, whether it's Ring Brothers or Mechatronic or Singer, you know, they're at the high level, but any yeah. of the lower level ones um, that are doing coyote swaps and stuff and stretching the T-Birds chassis so you can fit in it and, yeah. you know, reasonable things like that. Um, you know, people are going, listen, I want the nostalgia of these cars, but they're terrible. I want to yeah. actually use it. And so their originals are are not going for as much as the properly built resto mods. Well, that's Icon's and, uh, whole business model. Yeah, is, and yep. they do they do an amazing job. Yeah. those cars 
look like they could be original at first glance mm-hmm. until you start looking at the the details yeah. and all that. They're reliable. They don't yeah. leak. You don't have Lucas Electronics. You don't have this, yeah. that, whatever. I, I, I like that trend a lot. Yeah. Except for the very, you know, the super, super rare, you know, stuff that's that's oh, going to sure. sit in a museum or a collection sure. anyway. Like, I'd rather that. Right. Yeah. Nobody's LS uh, swapping a Ferrari 250. Yeah. But, right. Unless it's yeah. being raced at Goodwood. $30,000. Um, <laughs> but I think you have a great point because so many people buy these classic cars and they go, I really want to drive it, but, or or, or it's, one of the, it's one of the genres or markets where when you buy once, the people that know will call you or you'll talk to them and they'll say, there's a couple things you got to do before you drive it around. And then I think that just got so common that people now want to buy the resto modded one that's already had all that shit done to it. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I got right, so the so the, the sixty three split window resto mod that's a bad one. Anything else? Anything from your your wheelhouse typically is the nineties um, and two thousand stuff. Yeah, Callaway C twelve. Yeah, was, I, I overpaid for it slash bought it early. Right, so that was that was my bad. Um, but I figured it would catch kind of the same wind that everything else was. So Corvette C six RS. Yeah is in my mind arguably similar lineage heritage they're both both based off of racing cars but they're not true homologation specials mm-hmm. um and that one took a long time to sell and when i bought it they were valued about the same as a corvette c6 rs well my, the Corvette C6 RS had started going up in value sooner, but let's say 10 years ago, the C12 and the C6 RS were both a hundred thousand dollar car. The C6 RS now is three to four hundred k. These are 150 yeah. plus minus. And do you think just that's didn't... because Pratt and Miller is 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 just so associated with the race car, and Callaway really isn't so much, or? I, I mean, don't these, know. Are, these are cool, got a but great these are kind of funky looking. The C6 RS is a better looking car. I, I think, think that's a lot of it. Yeah, it's just a prettier car. But lots of ugly cars catch <laughs> because they're rare. <laughs> yeah. Right? They're yeah. rare and they have history. Yeah. How's so it to drive? I, I think that it's a Callaway? misunderstood car. Is it drive it's well? brilliant. Yeah. It's brilliant. Compared to the C6 RS, which I thought drove really cool. Well, C6 I RS. I drove is yours, amazing. the one you had. How many of those have you had? Uh, I've had three through my fingers uh-huh. yeah um yeah, that thing drove or, awesome three or four yeah um is, it, is this is this good compared to that or yeah is that i bad? mean it's, it's a previous generation car so you yeah. have to look at it that way but the c12 came out it was a street version of the c12r race car so they took everything they knew where callaway was trying to build a, a european type sports car to compete with porsche to beat porsche at le mans and they put all of that engineering into their street car. So yeah, it was it was really good. Yeah. You, you got rid of it eventually? Or yeah. Sold it? yeah. Yeah, we sold it you uh, had a couple a months while, ago. Though. I did. Yeah. I did. It's a funky looking car. I mean, you can see what they were going for. Um, but the the C five ness does kind of shine through a yeah. little bit. A little bit. And then I think yeah. it's like they got their headlights from Panos or something. Yeah, I think you know? Panos was not good for this car. <laughs> Don't wait, didn't you get a Panos Roadster? I've had a number of them. Are do they drive good? They're they drive okay. Not the Esperante, the open wheel thing. Right, right, right. Yeah. They drive far better than a Prowler. Yeah. Well <laughs> they got, Which, they got uh, my Nissan Altima drives better than a Prowler. Yeah, but the Panos Roadster, they've got they've got a Cobra motor in them, a, a Ford a thirty two valve Cobra motor in them. Yeah. And they, they those things. These things were all over the fucking DuPont registry in the nineties. Yeah. What are these worth today? Forty, fifty grand. I think that's a lot of car for forty or fifty grand, right? Do they drive that much? Do they drive like a fifty thousand dollar car? Sure. For for what else you can get? I mean, it's a fifty thousand dollar experience. It's yeah. unique. It's. I think they suffer from the same thing as a C twelve. They're they're controversial styling. They're not universally loved, but more importantly, they're they're misunderstood. Yeah. Right. Anytime you have to educate a market you're starting from behind right right so the c12 most people don't know what it is most even corvette collectors don't know what it is yeah panos roadsters when i had them in my shop literally one out of five people that came into my shop car people knew what it was yeah 20 percent of car people knew what it was and would would 
And how? What percentage of people would see it and be excited by it? The everybody the, who knew the what one it was. Out of five, yeah. If I saw that, I'd be like, "No fucking way!" I'd be yeah. super stoked. And probably so. Out of the five, two had no clue. One thought, one knew it was a Panos, and the other two said, "Oh, nice Prowler." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to drive one of those. I've never driven one. I'd like to have a go in one at some yeah, point. Yeah, they're they're fun. It seems neat. I mean, it's like you can't slide them though. Hmm. Right, because because of that that um, uh, uh, open wheel design, uh-huh. they had to limit the steering angle. It uses a Cobra steering rack, uh-huh. but, but with, with like limiters. Stops on it. Yeah. Oh. So I was trying to to drift one, just practice a sliding circle. I'm like, I can't hold this thing. Oh man, and it's that's because frustrating. you can't get enough opposite. Lock. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, you'd have to like cut out the body to to make it work. Yeah, yeah. Crown they, Vic these has were the same funky, problem. though. What? Crown Vic has the same problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it does. Focus RS also terrible. Uh, Focus RS had terrible, terrible steering. steering. I yeah. never had a problem sliding a Crown Vic. Oh, they'll slide. But you just can't. You, you can't, can't do, have you that can't much do a angle big to it. fast oh, drift sure, yeah. on them because you like run. Yeah, you run out of angle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you can't anyway because it doesn't have an LSD, so it's hard to, to oh, get there. Zach, uh, uh, Zach put an LSD in his. <laughs> yeah. Zach's, Zach's interceptor had a fucking LSD I took in it. it. To, to Sonoma Drift Day once, and they're like, "What are you doing here?" But <laughs> that's when I learned about the lack of steering angle when I looped it twice. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 I mean, most of the cop cars, the police interceptors had LSD. But it was in the back seat, not in the. <laughs> not diff. It was wah, in the evidence. Wah, wah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it. But that does bring up kind of an interesting point that, like, all those sort of weird cars that you and I love are not necessarily great things to buy as investments or buy to try to sell to even enthusiasts. They are great. If you can hold on to them long enough, right? The C12, I'm going to kick myself at some point because that car will be a half a million dollar car, right? But over if, a, if, over a long enough time, if timeline. you're gonna be an automotive investor, you have to be committed to the long term because mm-hmm. if you miss on the short term arbitrage, um, you just, you hold it long enough. Yeah. If it's a if it's a good car, if it's a yeah. bad car, then it's just a bad car. But if you yeah. hold it long enough, it'll it'll come back. Yeah. Um. A, a, guy I know in the car business says he only collects his mistakes, right? <laughs> but in some sense, it's better to hold on to it long term than to take the short term loss if you have the cash flow to do that. Yeah. In, in my business, or, yeah. it's turn, turn, turn. Right. So I'm not in that long term speculating business. Yeah. So the C12 had to go because then I can recycle that money and, and, and do it over and over. Yeah. My personal cars are a different story. I buy what I like and if I want to wait for it to maybe come up in value fine I'll, yeah i keep it but i enjoy keeping it yeah with inventory it's different because you buy something because you think it'll be a good turn yeah and then it doesn't and you're like well i hate this car now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah this is so. taking up 400 square feet of fucking space <laughs> my shop it's fucking nuts yeah. yeah yeah i feel you do we got anything interesting off the patreon let's go to a bit of that of course if you want to talk to us for the program the uh, Patreon is the way to do it. Patreon.com slash the Smoking Tire Podcast. Ad free listening experience and uh, live stream and all that. I've said this every time. Before we get to that, I do want to sure. loop back to, to where we started. You were asking about cars as investments. And, yeah. And your friendship and mine started right before when investment cars tanked, right? Yeah. 2009, yeah. all the high end cars just got decimated in yeah. value. And a lot of people are comparing what's happening now or might be on the horizon to, to 2009. And I think there's a difference because there, um, the high-end market got hit first, right? The real estates, the stocks, the high-end cars, and that kind of trickled down to everybody. But what I'm seeing now is, is the, the, the blue chip cars are doing really well. Um, anything 50 grand or more. I mean, some stuff took a, a hit on value, but I think it was just because it was inflated so much mm-hmm. from the, the pandemic market. Um, but one really big concerning data point is the subprime defaults. They're at 6.1%, which you would think, oh, that's low, right? I would think that buy here, pay here, like Ultimas are all, like perpetually on default, like 50% of their customers don't pay. 
but 6.1% is the highest rate in history. Really? Ever. What's the They what started is, oh, tracking it in 94. What is in what is in a what is a good month or a good number? I mean Two. Yeah, okay. All right. So that's high. Yeah. It's very high. Yeah. And it's it's likely only going to continue to get there. Um, cuz a lot of guy people had adjustable interest rates and student loan payments just kicked back in. Mm-hmm. So we have a lot of squeezes on that market, the, the, we'll say, lower middle class market. Plus, I think, like, because prices got a little inflated in 2021, 22, you have another factor for contributing to the underwater loan. Yes. Because you're like, Nobody can I get bought out. this for 90. Like, that's because it was overpriced by 30 yeah. grand right. or something like right. that. Right. Which yeah. is exactly what happened to the housing market is once you had that collapse and people had to sell, it wouldn't have been a big deal for people that could just keep making their mortgage payment. But if you have to sell and yeah. all of a sudden your stuff is down forty percent in value, yeah. who's going to absorb it? It's the banks. Ooh. Well, the, the banks underwriting these subprime loans are not traditional banks. So a, a few companies who have subprime franchises have already bankrupted. So where does this spiral into? That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think I think it's the opposite of 2009, where it's like a trickle up thing, uh-huh. right? So you're going to have the the lower class, we'll say, um, hurt big time. They're feeling the squeeze of inflation. They're feeling the squeeze of interest rates. They're going to default on their cars, and then th- the people who are making money off of them, because they're going to stop spending money. So the the Industries that are fed by that um, are going to get hurt, and that's when it's going to trickle up to the rest of the economy. So, like I'm in a uh, dealership Facebook group, it's mostly new car salesmen. It is depressing in there right now because every single one of them is like worst month ever. I just I've sold two drove cars, by whatever. a Ford dealer down in uh, where I was this morning, and the inventory on this lot compared to like a month or two ago was insane. Yep. Like 20 mach 10 Raptors, two dozen Broncos. I was like, what the fuck is going on down here? There's so many cars on this lot right yep. now. Like, that is the opposite of well, what the last two years were. And, and yep. here's the thing. That a lot sense. of car dealers and salesmen are to blame, right? Because just like in 2007-8, Builders were building like crazy. There were signals that that demand was going to come to an end. Yeah. But they overbuilt, overbuilt, basically saying, well, the party's never going to end. Same thing with dealers, with their ADMs and stuff. Yeah. I don't I don't fault a dealer for charging an ADM. Market's market. But dealers got really, really greedy and never said, this is going to come to an end. Let's set up some hedges. Let's make sure our clients aren't buried yeah. so they're still clients two years from now. Yeah. That didn't happen, so it's it's. A, I think it's going to be a harsher reset than would have to be, just because people people have short term thinking. Yeah, it's I. It's so funny that you mentioned the dealer thing because I, as I drove by this dealer this morning, I was like, Hannah, look to my wife. I was like, look how many fucking cars are on this dealer. <laughs> it's like every color, every car. Just yep. pick pick one, and they're cars that. A couple of months ago, it was, well, you better order it now if you want it in six months, or you better pay, you know, ADM if you want to get it. I was like, this guy, this place is probably giving cars away right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a year yeah. and a half ago, they were they were parking them like, like yeah, they yeah, spread out. Spot. They, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're spreading them out, you know, like yeah. making it look like cars yeah. from dealer to dealer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, that's, yeah, you're right. That's crazy. And it's going to be, uh, I wonder when it totally falls apart. And when that happens, what are you going to buy, Doug? Ultimas. <laughs> <laughs> hundreds, hundreds of Ultimas. <laughs> um, Only make it up on volume. Yeah. yeah. No, street race. That's what SR stands yeah. for. That's true also. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Um, they need an ST next, the street takeover edition. Fuck. <laughs> that's the, seen, that's you, the infinity. Have you seen around my, around our city here I've all the fucking s- intersections with just fucking circles all over <laughs> them? I saw a couple. That's, yeah, it's so dumb. It's Terrible. So dumb. Terrible. Um, all right. So uh, we were, oh, yeah. we were on a Questions. mission. Let's go back yeah. to it. We got a few. Uh uh, let's see. George says, uh, Doug, we want an update on the airbrushed GMC Suburban. 
Mm. Sells drugs. Uh, Kingpin, I nicknamed that car. Yeah. My license remember, plate was sells drugs. I remember drugs. seeing it that car. like a 90s drug dealer. They gave you that license plate? Oh, yeah. Wow. wow. Ohio Dude, must I not saw, have the I safety saw one switches last night. On. <laughs> California would, would neg that plate. Instantly. I saw one yesterday at a car show on a Mustang drag car. Uh, balls deep. <laughs> wow. Wow. That it was rolled. a temp tag, though, so it might get rejected <laughs> upon further 14s. review. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like a thousand horsepower oh, car. So he was, was referring to his debt. <laughs> possibly. <laughs> possibly. To, to his ex-wife. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I sold both of my Suburbans, uh, the, the two-tone original one and um, the airbrushed one. Neither of them were super practical for what I wanted to do. I did love both of them, uh, and I bought a 7.3 diesel excursion oh, right. instead because oh, cool. yeah. Yeah. that just works. Yeah. Um, I was trying to be a multifaceted car collector, and I, honestly, that was what got me to the Diablo. I had a killer Mustang SSP. Um, I had the two Suburbans. I had a Toyota Century. I had a bunch of cars that were cheap and really good but i'm like i have to maintain all these i have to store all of them this is so much work and you only have so many years you can maybe own a supercar yeah and i sold all of them and put it towards getting yeah a, upward a, consolidation a poster car yeah. you know i'm like i'm i'm here i can do this why am i not doing this Good move. So. Yeah, when you were a kid, you didn't have two Suburban posters and a Century. <laughs> I did, though. No, did I did. I had Suburban and Dodge Ram posters and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. I, I was a, like, I loved the Durango when that when the new one came out, yes. like the, the rounder one. Yep. I had that magazine open, like, I'm going to save money for this. And it was just a cool car. Yeah. But No, Diablo. serious nostalgia with the Suburbans. But yeah, sold them. Uh, RS1 Daily. By the way, Doug, you said you're friend was coming by here is that something we need to be i don't know he with? might be locked out but whatever okay i, well, I don't know he hasn't texted me so okay cool i just want to Ad, make adam sure. said he was going to wait to let him in so i don't, I oh, don't know oh really i hope i'm not paying him for that <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure adam would happily wait on the clock we'll see you can uh, invoice doug yeah uh rs1 I, I will rs1 daily says uh doug mentioned nostalgia driving the collector market and generations having their poster cars uh, in video games. Oh, Generations now having their poster cars in video games. What manufacturer would best be served by getting their car in Forza or such? Nissan. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be able to cut it up and do street takeovers yeah. in an Ultima on a video game. I mean, that's good. That's... But they got to do vertical orientation I mean, too, think, so it's more realistic. Well, I mean, I feel like all the <laughs> aren't all the manufacturers don't they all have all their cars? In video I, I games? Think so. It took a long time though for I think Ferrari wasn't in there for a while and Porsche. There's like because it's licensing. Yeah, I think it's taken a minute, but now they all see the value in it. I'm not sure what uh, games or what cars are not in games. I haven't I haven't played the newest. Spiker. I gotta, I gotta yeah. That market went. That, that was that was a. That's not a car. That's a Ponzi scheme. Now, <laughs> <laughs> so the cars are so pretty. But talk uh, about a car you had to educate your buyer on. I think right. A bit. But they are cool. I love. They them. went way up in value. Yeah, uh, they were they, they were unsellable for about seven years. I had one on consignment. Literally <laughs> couldn't sell it. Yeah, and then all of a sudden they were four hundred grand out of nowhere. Uh, John Osborne says, "Have exotic car buyers changed over time, and if so, how?" They've gotten younger. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I am one. Yeah, yeah. me so, too. Yeah. Like, and a lot of the people I see at car shows and shit are shockingly young driving yeah. some of this stuff. Yeah. It's, it, it, it used to be an old an old guy's thing. It's yeah. not anymore. Which is great because Enzo Ferrari said, I make cars for young men that only old men can afford. <laughs> That's a great line. So Enzo had fucking words sometimes. I'm excited yeah. for the movie. You guys excited for the Ferrari movie? No. Yeah, what's yes. that? Uh, Christmas, right? I think so, yeah. yeah. The trailers look awesome. Can't Stuff. be worse than the Lamborghini movie. <laughs> Holy oh shit, my. did you guys watch that? No, I was warned not to. Oh, I didn't watch straight it garbage. Everybody. Straight garbage. It was unbelievably bad. Yeah. yeah. It was heinous. It didn't. It was bad on a, a filmmaking level. It was bad on a car guy level. It was even bad on a... This makes no fucking sense plot-wise. Right. Uh, yeah, it was not good at all. 
Uh, Ryan says, Doug, can you elaborate on your website? You acknowledge How much it sucks. Not, yeah, your website is basic. It's GeoCities, I might say. <laughs> uh, serviceable websites are cheap these days, and one customer, this is presumptuous, one customer conversion from a nicer website would probably pay for itself for years. I'm, I'm not, not necessarily web services. that's true. Uh, he says, I'm not in web yeah. services. That's apparent because good websites are not cheap that actually no. function and have a back end. Um, it, yeah, building the, the, the next generation website that we want in terms of the functionality is not cheap and it's not simple. Um, it, it's not a conscious de decision. Um, we had the website mostly done a couple years ago. And upon final review, uh, I wanted to hire a designer to do the, the aesthetics of it. So then that basically set us back to square one, sort of. Um, our web developer had some health issues, stuff like that. So it just kept dragging out. But honestly, I didn't care because my, rela my business is more relationship-based uh -huh. than website-based. Um, sure. So it was never a priority because I never saw like a drop off in sales or some need for it, right? Like yeah. we have as much business as we can handle for the most part. Yeah. So it's part of the master plan to improve it um, and, and to change it, and it will be done fairly soon. Um, but as long as like but, the photos are good, the description's accurate, you pick up the phone when someone calls, like isn't right. that more important? Yeah. Like I don't yeah. personally give a shit as long as the website even if it like looks old, like as long as it's clearly been updated recently, right. and like yes, it I mean, says I'm not you gonna have lie, this. It doesn't function very well on iOS with the photos and stuff. <laughs> oh, like really? I get, I get it, but people that just call me. Like we yeah. have a great book of clients, and uh, you know, yes, we're missing out on some business there, but but we're not feeling it because we yeah. keep growing and. Our yeah. profits are well, up Doug's and our sales are Doug's up. Doug's a celebrity, too. So. And Doug is a celebrity <laughs> business owner. Yeah. 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 All right. That's, I mean, fair enough. Do it Do it when you get around to it. Uh, Zach, we need to, we need the page, please. Uh, whoa, wait. Uh, Lieberman's English BO. <laughs> Best driving 12-cylinder car under $50,000, ideally manual, but not required. Aston Martin V8 Vantage. 12 cylinder. They said 12 oh, cylinder. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I was thinking you Aston Martin. You got a DB7 Vantage manual. Might, um, might be that price. And it would that's be kind of nice. Very, very good. Yeah, yeah that might DB7 be nice. DB7 Vantage manual. Would, would, they don't come up very often, but they are yeah. cool. That would be a, G, a GTA, but, is the automatic one, isn't it? <clears throat> Or is GTA also manual? Well, GTA is the GT model. So the GT oh, yeah. model, they added 15 horsepower and did a, a fiberglass uh, deck lid lip oh, and a different right. hood yeah, and yeah. upgrade suspension and uh, larger brakes and different wheels. Yeah, get that one. Probably not 50 grand, though. You could get a GTA for under 50 grand. Could you? Yeah. If, that if, would if be... You, you could probably... You can still find a high mileage uh, GT manual for under 50 they they never come up. There's 64 of them made for the U.S. Oh, okay. But it's brilliant. It's there, I, brilliant. The last it one I drove, I was car. shocked at how great it was. The best ones in the world. I think I set a record because I sold one for like 74, 75 <laughs> grand, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Like, talk about an undervalued car. Yeah. That's a DB7 yeah, GT. Yeah, DB7 GT manuals. Look yeah. how pretty that is. I mean, that that's fantastic. Yeah, and and that's the same manual that would go on to to go in the Vanquish basically, which is a lovely motor. Um, they're they're super great. They sound great. They're pretty. They're screwed together pretty well. I like those. Or S six hundred coupe, which are like twenty five grand gets you the greatest one on earth. Not manual, but lovely. Um, all-wheel drive bias said, can cars legitimately perform or feel different on different days or within the same days for no reason? If you agree, do you have examples from your lives and any tricks to set the car into its better form? I have had a, I have washed a dirty car and had it drive better afterwards. What? I swear to God. I mean, that is placebo effect. No, I don't, I don't think so. I think well, but you, that's not I no reason. Can... There is a reason. I think, I, I think the no reason thing needs to be struck, but no apparent reason. I like, cars, I didn't adjust the parts break, or if it, I think if it loses pressure in the tire or something, like, then, or yeah. Maybe, maybe so, they're talking well, about performance. Was, was like, there, like, stuff gunked up in the suspension? And... I mean, yeah, I, I have, like, 
you know, power washed out the brakes and the suspension in the wheel wells and stuff. And I, it has, to me, felt like the car drove better. Sure. Now, it could be in my fucking head. I don't know. Well, but what it if felt, there's 20 pounds of it, dirt? Yeah, or there's, there or there's stuff that, you know, maybe is the shock isn't moving so, so sure. smooth. Or, you know, I've had squeaky brakes that I power wash out and they don't squeak anymore. That happens I, all the time. The the biggest example of this, and to me, it's like obvious, but I know it isn't to everybody. Is is in the winter? Yeah, you have this effect where you'll get ice buildup inside your wheels. Yeah, and that can your car will. It's like having like, wheel weights. In yes. It. Yeah. Like yeah. It's up. terrible. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It'll like shake all yeah, over. Yeah, and yeah. Once you get them out, or, or even snowpack in, will do that. Um, so that's that's probably the most. My head immediately example. goes to heat soaking. Sure. Because these mm-hmm. modern cars with forced induction, like their heat exchangers are not up to par. So it's like you get on, the, you make one pull on the car, and then you mm. go to make another one. Yeah. Like, it can't recover. Yeah. Or I mean, if it temps, if the temp swings 50, 60 degrees in a day, which well, that can, would can't also. happen. Like your yeah. car will feel Sim- very different. Similar, similar situation. That's yeah. my eighties cars. If I drive them two days in a row. They're they're so happy that second day. I, either they haven't cooled all the way down to like ice cold to the core, or just like if the Countach sits for three or four weeks, it's clunky. But if I drive it twice or three times in a week, it's like great. It's it starts faster. It just generally is happier. Um, stuff that needs to self lubricate has remained lubricated. It hasn't dried out. So I, I think there's I think there's a little something to it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Flannel Bob says, "Do you have any favorite automotive commercials and advertising?" Uh, my favorite is from the '80s, where a Ford pickup carries a Chevy pickup on its bed up a mountain of boulders. That is a great. <laughs> oh, I, re- a I remember that. Amazing. Yeah. Lexus champagne glass commercial. I, that I was, a good was one. that was a yeah. that was an amazing one. I thought that was fucking genius and still holds up today. I think I mean the Volkswagen ads were hilarious. Yes, the, the printed GTI. ones. The, no, no, no. The the, the unpimp the auto and all oh, that stuff. Oh, the unpimp yeah. the auto. Just yeah, like really those funny, were great. Like straight comedy ads. Those were good. There was so, a there was a Volkswagen ad that was surprisingly well, maybe I don't know. There, there's so many on the internet now that they do on YouTube that they don't put on TV. But the Volkswagen ad where you see like the 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 Volkswagen Beetle like shaking. Like you know what's going on, and then they go to the dealer and get a bigger car, and you see it shaking, and they finally like all the way up, end up with an <laughs> atlas for the whole family. You know, <laughs> um, my favorite That's is probably amazing. the the Mustang ad from I don't know ten fifteen years ago. And I think they only did this on YouTube, where it was the police chase around like downtown L.A. Mm-hmm. and they're drifting around with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like it just it seemed like an era of super conservative ads. And four just like did this viral video online, and I watched it over and over and yeah. over again. Yeah. I would say I like that. a good example of, of the modern version is Toyota stuff that Sweatpants Media, uh, I think, wrote, but the ones where they're basically breaking the fourth wall of how car ads are conceived. Okay. So they're like, all right, the car is drifting, and, and the execs are like, ooh, yeah, and they go, ooh, but we got to make sure it's done legally, right? Or, or it's like they have, to, they have to wear a helmet. Like so, they're it's like they're bringing in the legal team that always looks at ads and print right. and, and copy and goes, oh, how do we make this boring? Because we have all these stupid laws, right? Because otherwise, yeah. TikTok will take you down for dangerous acts. Exactly. That's Ask pretty. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> like the car is flying through the air and it has to be like closed course. Like no shit. But uh, yeah. <laughs> that, the, the BMW the like Guy Ritchie stuff that was cool. Those too. are good. The, Those were really good. Um, like the DVD ones. I, Do you remember? The, I think the, they were released as DVDs. Were they, they were like the, the Hire or something like that. It was uh, uh, well, not the Transporter, but no, it was during. I think the, it was the Hire or something like that. There was like a series of five or seven. Yeah, yeah, them. yeah. Five Owen, and BMW Films. Films. Five yes. Owen, yeah. It was yes. BMW uh, Films. That's right. I still yeah, have yeah. those, but they're in a format that I can't play. Like it won't <laughs> play on a DVD player. You gotta buy like an early two thousands truck that has like Alpine DVD player in it, and then it'll play on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the, well, one page calls him the hire. Another one called it Star, a short film, because I think that's when he transports Madonna in the yeah, back. Yeah, um, yeah. So I guess there was a couple of titles. Yeah, there. it was yeah, the like hire. the transporter. Yeah, BMW made their own short films. Yeah, those yeah. were great. Yeah, those were cool. That, if that was a good how concept. I can play. <laughs> you gotta be. A, I mean, you can probably I, just stream them on YouTube right now. Oh yeah, yeah they're probably. on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, sh- um, boomer. Yeah. <laughs> Did you buy a bunch of DVDs of it that you're gonna sell? <laughs> Hold on, let me make a note in my flip phone that that's where I can watch them. <laughs> um, we've been asked this a bunch of times, but Clinton Casatin, Casatin, 
uh, says, do you feel new cars are lacking passion and quality of feel? Yes. They're faster and more comfortable, but I'm not excited for a majority of new cars, of both affordable and non-affordable. I think 2012 is like the line of demarcation for me when cars just cease to become interesting. Mm. Um, I, I know they're doing great thing with technology, and cars now are better than they used to be, but there's only so much you can do on the street. Yeah. And cars now are way too capable for the street. So you can't actually wring them out and enjoy them the way they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that, I want some type of other engagement. Like I want to be able to shift. I want to be able to feel the drivetrain. Sure. Hear the motor. I want a car that's fun to drive at, you know, not jail speed. That's why I like my 328 so much. Yeah. It's just great. But I think 2012 was like the last... Yeah. Kind you know of. what's interesting? I think the at the lower end, the cars are much like like a GR Corolla or an 86 or the Honda Civic Type R uh, or the Integra Type S. Like I think you get when when they when they apply the technology but keep it analog and mm-hmm. affordable, you end up with such a great product. That's a great point. But there's fewer and fewer of those. But I think there's more because the manufacturers, there's less in the high end, but there's more in the the entry level because the manufacturers are seeing the demand for it and they're kind of going back to that. Only in the last couple, couple of years. years. Only in the last couple of years. Right, yeah, but yeah. like stick shift, new car, stick shift production has increased yes. in the last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think there's a little bit of a shift there. And I, to well, me, that's Well, there was definitely some backlash against everyone threatening to make them go away, for sure. And yeah. now people, they've realized, like, if you want one, you better buy one. And so, yeah. um, but like we just did, you know, Performance Car of the Year for Road and & Track, and we divided it into under 100,000, over 100,000, right? And five cars for each. And under a hundred thousand, four of the five cars were manual, and mm-hmm. over none of them no. were. No, uh, yep. nope, that's not true. The Porsche uh, Carrera T, one yep. out of one out of five. Yep. Um, but under it was it was Which four is like out of hundred one thousand. <laughs> yeah, it was a hundred and eight. It was a low a low spec car, and I think it was like a hundred and eighteen maybe. But it had a special color, and, and like in terms of performance stuff, it was like maybe one ten. But yep. Carrera T's are very nice. And M Engineering just posted something they with a basic tune on a Carrera T and maybe like an exhaust and intercoolers. They did 450 at the tires, Whoa. which that would be a fucking that's a, ride. That's a good dis- that's Carrera a good T with 450 at the wheels would be so Golly. sick. That would be delightful. Um, Christian says, uh, how does Porsche Experience Center compare to other driving schools? I've done PECLA a bunch of times. Curious how it stacks up. Um, I have not done, I've only done like hot lap rides at, uh, the experience center. Um, I haven't done like their full on driving school, so I don't know. Uh, I've done Skip Barber. I've done mid Ohio. I've done Bondurant, which is now, um, Radford, Radford. Thank you. Um, so I I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a really great place. Uh, I've heard amazing things about not the experience center, but the, the Porsche driving experience at Barber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've heard that's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful program. Experience is like, I mean, those there. that's a couple that's a of short, hours. It's a yeah. short program. It's designed for you to show up, have fun, and yeah. then kind of go home. It's not, You're not really a real driving skills. school. It's really designed for you to, like the name says, experience the cars in a, in a safe way. Yep. Schools, it's like you're paying to learn the craft. And yes. so they spend more time on that and focus less on this is what the car is like. Because you're driving like a whatever car. It doesn't matter. Yep. So it's a it's better than nothing, certainly. You'll you'll get you'll get some you know, experience and instruction, but that instruction is designed to keep you safe on that day more so than to give you long term skills or prepare you for club track days or racing. Yeah, I think. Uh, Dre in Houston says, "What's your take on the fit and finish differences between 991 and 992?" Uh, and then goes on to say, "The 992 is not as good." Um, I think it depends on the individual car because you can get stuff with le- full extended leather or without, yeah. with, depending on which seats you get. I don't think it's worse. 
Do you? Well, I mean, it's abundant use of plastics. They've been using plastic since... Since 996s. But you yeah. can always get extended right. leather that covers all of it. Yeah. I, got, I, I drove like a 992 that's like a crazy high spec where there's no plastic anymore. It's like leather and metal or in every... Right. That, uh, that green turbo that's downstairs, that's got a big sticker on it. And it's all the dope shit. And it's definitely very nice. But sure. like... I don't think there's a, a, a huge difference. Um, I, I I like the 991 better because of the layout, yeah. the design, yeah. but that's just personal preference. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, and I like having the certain buttons for right. certain and things. Right, center and, stack the yeah, way it is. I yeah, I like that better, and I like the size and shape of the car a little better, but I don't think it's a, really a downgrade in quality, assuming you're talking about an identically specced car. Right. Do you? Do you have a lot of experience uh, with those? No, I don't. I don't have a ton of experience. But I, what I do remember is, uh, back at AMS, we had we had gotten we were getting into Porsches. We had a nine nine six. Yeah, and I, you know, that was really cool back to have a nine nine six back then. And then we got a nine nine seven. And man, was that a big difference! It was. That yeah, was, it was like that was like th- three generations of improvement between sure. the nine nine six and the nine nine seven. And then to go to nine nine one was a big improvement as well in terms of fit and finish. Yeah, I haven't I, compared yeah. the. I haven't compared those two. Yeah, I don't. But, I think you gotta. I think I, either of them can feel. Every generation has its misses too, because yeah. like the nine nine ones had the the door panel shrinkage yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, you know. yeah. I don't agree with Dre in Houston. I think it's. I think it's fine, but you got to get the the get the the, the materials. Uh, Ye GT. If you could swap any powertrain into any platform, what would it be and why? Uh, dream, dream build. I would swap a BMW 5.75 liter engine into a McLaren F1 chassis. <laughs> Wait, is that a McLaren F1 engine? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's my dream power dream. Did you swap. see, uh, I saw, do you follow it's that, uh, that lens, you know, the Lanzante guys, you know them? Mm-hmm. They do a bunch of crazy shit. They have, they're building an Ultima GTR with a McLaren oh, F1 boy. engine Ooh, in it. Yes. Yeah, which seems, that seems like an interesting uh, undertaking. Yeah. Um, I, no, I honestly probably... The best engine again. Well, here's another cop out answer: is the Pagani. But I take that seven liter V12 engine and put it in like Jaguar XJS. anything. I yeah, put, <laughs> I put it back into anything. the R129 SL. Yeah, with the, with the manual gearbox. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good take one. Take the Zonda 760 motor and put it back into the Benzo. Put it in the Corvette C6. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A Pagani motor in an SL with a manual would gearbox be, yeah. would be a pretty good time. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with the SL is I've had a number of them, and I always wanted to make them more sporty. And yeah. I'm like, I have to totally reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Because I can't buy good seats for it because yeah. the seat belt's in the seat. It doesn't have a limited slip differential. Yeah. Oh, I want a stick shift. Well, shoot, I have to order a $15,000 gearbox from, from the UK. Yeah. Well, it's only a $15,000 car. Yeah. So it's not... Like nobody made parts for that yeah. to make it a sports it's car. Not, it's not worth doing, even right. though it's the kind of thing that seems like in 10 years it'll be worth doing. Right. You know, well, it's and, like mechatronics are yeah. going to have to get a hold of it. And, yeah. And now you're talking about 200 grand fucking right. down the Those guys are doing some dope shit. Yep. Megatronic is pretty rad. I like, I like what they're doing a lot. Those sleeper pagodas they build are mm-hmm. fucking so rad. Yeah, those guys are dope. Uh, last one. Steven Perea says, cross-shopping CT4 Blackwing with the G87 M2. Looking to get manual in either car. I prefer the CT4 Blackwing to the M2. To get the M2, oh, M2? Well, the M2 is um, heinous. Extremely <laughs> ugly. It it's extremely so ugly. ugly. It's extremely ugly. So ugly. And uh, the Blackwing the, is the really The CT4 Blackwing is great looking. I like the steering better in the black wing. I like the shifter better in the black wing. I like the brakes better in the black wing. The M2 has quite a bit more power. It's rated as having more power, and it's underrated for sure. If you turn off traction control in the M2, it is a lunatic of a car. 
It does not want to have traction anywhere. You can drift third and fourth gear if you want. Um, and the M2 has like numb steering. It's very direct, it's very sharp, and it's set up to oversteer, but it doesn't have any feel, whereas the Blackwing has really, really good feel. So like new for new, I'd rather have a CT4 Blackwing. The only thing about the Blackwing is it doesn't sound as good. Yeah, but also has all like more uh, physical button controls yeah. versus the BMW M2 has the super screen with mm -hmm. all like the touch icons and stuff like that. Oh, those those icons suck. I mean, I think the fact you could customize it and make all these quick shortcuts helped a yeah, lot. Yeah, that's true. Journalist Help, problem. It helped a lot yeah. when I set it up, but it's still just, it's a very different looking interior. The whole yeah. screen thing baffles me anyway, because it's like, hey, you shouldn't text and drive. Don't, you know, put yeah, your phone but down. But use a <laughs> giant <laughs> iPad. Give you a giant screen. Watch this yeah. IMAX to yeah. get yeah. all the information. <laughs> you shouldn't use your device. You should use our device. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah. you find at the very high end, they're taking the screens away, right? Bugattis, no screen. You know, uh, the, 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 the really high-end stuff. If you go to the Quail, all those cars that are five million bucks, no screens. Or, or just the, the barest minimum, you know, Koenigsegg, whatever, just bare, bare minimum of screens. It's a cycle, just like the manuals coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, boys, thanks for stopping by. Heck yeah. It's a good show. Yeah. I'm glad you made it here safely in whatever the hell you were flying, driving, not doing anything. Uh, plane. Plane. In a plane. Uh, of course, uh, check out uh, Switch Cars uh, for buying some weird shit. Yep. Whatever you – maybe some not weird shit too. The website is it, – it, it's not like Heaven's Gate. It's still accurate. You know what's a better <laughs> website is our podcast website. Yeah, plug Switchcast it. Switchcast.live. That's a great website. It's very up-to-date and, and – modern how often friendly. are you doing episodes uh once a week are you enjoying it yeah it's a good time isn't it yeah talking bullshit with your friends yeah it's we do so this season we kind of went away from the guest model and we're just we're doing automotive news and car business stuff yeah because we're focusing more on the, the practical advice yeah and just like talking crap yeah um that's what and they that's, want, it's worked it? really really well yeah, we used to do all guest shows, and now we do about half guest shows because, mm -hmm. as it turns out, they like hearing Zach and I bullshit with each other as well. Yeah. And, of course, Cannonball Garage, if you're fucking with McLarens, if you're fucking with – is it all McLarens all the time still? What yeah, else are we doing down there? About 90%. We do yeah. some Porsche Turbo stuff. And some Porsche Turbos, yeah. Freddie, Freddie said some very nice things. Are the Porsches yeah. too reliable and they don't give you as much <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, like to, we, we picked the polar opposite. Have you done any Arturas yet? No, um, but I hear that they're littering the dealerships, and that's a little little scary. Yeah, well, and I don't think they were, I don't think that car was ready to be released. Uh, it was not, and they had to buy a bunch of them back. And yeah, now they're coming back. Now they're going back the other way, going back out. Yeah, you know, it's a hard life. But for but the people yeah. that drive them, I have not driven one, but the people that drive them, ra everyone that's driven one has raved about it. I drove it and I loved it. I I, I seriously did. I, I drove it a couple hundred miles on the road and I drove it on the track and I thought it was fucking incredible. It drove great. It was really fast, really responsive, great visibility, lots of fun. Yeah. UI is great. Well, hopefully they um, got it sorted out. Yeah. Now. And I'm so stoked for the 750. The 750 is going to be fucking rad. I was happy. As a business owner, I was also happy because it's like just a better 720. Yeah. So 720 with keep, 765 keep gears, 765 exhaust, yeah. and the Artura's user interface. Like, yeah. yes, please. Like all, all of the things that that are yeah. big improvements. Yeah, yeah. So. And I took a 720 to Pebble Beach. They gave me a they gave me like an extra car that was laying around. It was like a 7,000 mile 720 press car, which might as well be 100,000 miles. <laughs> <laughs> and it was awesome. I put 1,300 miles on it in a week and it was fucking the That's best. That's a great car. Oh, it's so good. I love yeah. everything. So the 750 is just going to be that much gonna be better. fantastic. Yeah, yeah it's going to be like a developed car. So stoked. Thanks for stopping by, boys. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks Thanks appreciate it. Good Get home safe. Again. Yeah, of course. Then, I'll see you uh, next quarter. <laughs> <laughs> if Lieberman doesn't fight you in the parking lot. Uh, thanks um, for listening, everybody. We will uh, we'll see you guys next uh, episode. Bye.